For the past 16 seasons, the Miami Dolphins have lived off the right arm of Dan Marino in a prolific career with staggering accomplishments. His resume sparkles with NFL records. Marino has thrown more passes for more yards and more touchdowns than any player in the history of the league. Year after year, he has launched the football long and often. But this season, he's been asked to embrace a different philosophy. I'm not throwing it as much, but there will obviously there'll be times when we have to. But uh, to be a little more consistent, running the ball, being uh, more uh, effective and efficient throwing the ball. Marino out of the shotgun, fires down the middle, a catch by McDuffie. Marino looking, he throws, touchdown Miami. And for me, it's a matter of just winning football games and whatever that takes. I've always been that way. And if it's, you know, if it was 10 years ago and that was the case and we win, that's okay with me. Marino will have to be at the top of his game tonight because the undefeated Jacksonville Jaguars are matched up against the Dolphins. The league's hottest new franchise faces Florida's traditional favorites on ABC's Monday Night Football. A beautiful fall evening in northern Florida, not far from the Georgia border. In Jacksonville, this used to be the Gator Bowl. Now it's refurbished all Tell Stadium, capacity 73,000, every seat filled tonight. Al Michaels with Dan Deidorf and Boomer Esiason. Welcome to the first ever meeting between the Dolphins and the Jaguars. Big game for both teams. Miami began its season by winning three straight. Then they looked awful last week in a 20-9 loss to the New York Jets and trying to rebound tonight. As we discussed on the pregame show, Miami running the ball now. Dan Marino won't be getting any sore arms this season. Their defense, though, has been the reason they've won those three out of four. Jacksonville, meanwhile, 4-0, and oh, and with a win tonight, looking at a three-game road trip, including a game at Denver, they would go already two games up in the AFC Central over their nemesis, the Pittsburgh Steelers. So from Florida, the Battle of the Floridians, the Dolphins and the Jaguars from Jacksonville will kick it off when we come back. ABC Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. I'm Leslie Visser back at All Tell State. Well, Jimmy Johnson a balanced attack this year, but Jimmy, it sounds strange to say with Dan Marino, but how are you going to jumpstart your passing game? Well, Leslie, in the first dozen plays or so, we've got scripted about a half a dozen passes. We've Without question, we've got to get them out of an eight-man front if we're going to be effective running the ball. Right, we'll look for that. Thanks, Jimmy. Back to you, Al. Thank you, Leslie. And the Jets used a lot of eight-man fronts last week in an overwhelming victory over the Miami Dolphins, who will kick it off with Alinda Mare to send it skyward before a roaring crowd in Jacksonville. Reggie Barlow and Tavian Banks are back to receive. And it comes down into the arms of the rookie Tavian Banks, their fourth round draft choice from Iowa and third down back and kick returner gets tackled by Brian Walker. So the Jaguars now with Mark Brunel. Brunel has been to the Pro Bowl in each of the last two seasons. In fact, two years ago, he was the Pro Bowl MVP off to a good start this year. Behind him in the backfield, the rookie out of Florida, Fred Taylor, with Damon Shelton, Smith, and McCardell. Great receivers, and Mitchell, the tight end. And then up front, Baselli as good as they come. Coleman, New Year, DeMarco, and Searcy. Great tackles. Good offensive line. They've done the job through the four games thus far. First down from the 23-yard line. Their top draft choice on the opening play of the game with one man to beat, and he is not run down by Madison and scores. Well, I guess you can set up the Miami defense the next series. Oh, man. 77 yards for the rookie from Florida. A kid who would have been on the bench except for the fact James Stewart was hurt early in the third game of the season. Taylor goes 77. When you have a defense that is built on speed and over pursues, you have to watch out for the cutbacks. That's exactly what Fred Taylor did that time. What a great read that. Whoo, man. <laughs> 
Mike Hollis with a point after. I haven't even sat down yet. I haven't taken my jacket off. Chairs aren't warm. <laughs> Freddie Taylor, a kid born in Florida, raised in Florida, went to Florida, plays in Florida, and 20 seconds into the game, it's 7-0 Jacksonville. That is Jason Taylor, Miami's best defensive lineman. They moved him to the other side of the line of scrimmage to get away from Tony Baselli. He's slow to close that hole. Kind of lamely reaches out with one arm, and Fred Taylor is gone. That's a surprise they were going to throw at Jacksonville tonight, trying to get the light Taylor away from the overpowering Baselli, playing out of position. He didn't get in and close the hole. Now Mike Hollis to kick off. Miami to get it. 20 seconds into the game. It is shielded by the rookie John Avery from the six. And Avery from... The University of Mississippi brings it back out to the 29-yard line. And here comes Dan Marino with this new and more conservative offense already having to come from behind. The fabulous career winding down at the age of 37, 16th year from Pittsburgh. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Stanley Pritchard to the running backs. Gadsden and McDuffie are the wideouts, and Drayton is the tight end. Then up front, Richmond Webb, who normally goes to the Pro Bowl, well, he didn't last year. Dixon, Ruddy, Donnelly, and Brown. Donnelly's done a real nice job. They picked him up in the offseason as a free agent from the Oilers. From the 29-yard line, Miami's first offensive play. And Marino finding everybody covered, and then he dumps it off underneath, and it is caught by Troy Drayton, the tight end who gets taken down by Dave Thomas after a gain of five. Jacksonville up front, win, Pritchard, Yurkovich, and Tony Brackens has been hurt, makes his first appearance of the season. Hoff, McManus, and Kevin Hardy a couple of years ago. Hardy, the number two guy picked in the entire draft. Beasley and Thomas, the corners. Darius, a great-looking rookie, and Hudson. Seven-yard run seven to nothing it is second down now and five from the 33 yard line abdul jabbar swings to the outside and turns it back and gets ridden into the turf okay. at the 34 yard line taken down by tony bracken james stewart started the season as the number one running back even though taylor was their top draft choice ninth guy picked they were going to work Taylor in slowly, but when Stewart went down and went down for the year, the job became Fred's. And James picked up over 100 yards in each of the first two games of the season. And then Al talk about not missing a beat. In comes Fred Taylor. He gains over 100 yards in his two starts and appears to be well on his way to 100 yards tonight as well. Tom Coughlin, who doesn't miss a beat, imploring the crowd to get noisy and they do and on third and five it is caught by McDuffie so they convert for a first down Mike Logan makes the tackle Miami this season on more than half of their drives had not even made a first down so at least a good start for them tonight well you're going to be seeing Dan Marino <clears throat> excuse me seeing Dan Marino doing a lot of coaching out on the field tonight he has OJ McDuffie who he feels very comfortable with but he has a lot of other young receivers that he's going to be talking to all night tonight and you could see the frustration on Dan Marino's face even after the first pass that he threw. Coughlin getting the crowd into it, and they are. And on first down, it is great. It is the tight end for a gain of two. You know, Al, you make the point about half the time, or more than half the time, that they don't gain a first down. It's stunning that they have a winning record. It is stunning that they are three and one with an offensive performance that puts the defense on the field that often. I would think a lot of that is also a victim of circumstance. You know, a couple of games early on, they played against Indianapolis and Peyton Manning's first game and a downpour against Pittsburgh and then also played against the Jets. You know, team's not known for great offense. There is Abdul Jabbar. He takes it to the 48-yard line. So another third down play coming up. Third and about six from the 48. Tackled by Donovan Darius. Kareem Abdul Jabbar will come out now. And John Avery, who was their top pick in the draft, Avery is a kid they want to work in more and more. But for the moment, Bernie Parmalee is a third down back. And there is the veteran who is in there. We will see a lot, though, of Avery before this night is done. Marino from the 
shotgun. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up by the offensive line, and then it's almost intercepted as McDuffie had to become the defender. Mike Logan almost picked it off. I will tell you, if I'm the Jacksonville defense, I am just smothering O.J. McDuffie. Because, you know, Dan doesn't feel very comfortable with the other young guys. He's going to try to fire the ball in there. He still has a lot of confidence in his arm. But you know, he does. You can see he's looking at McDuffie the whole way. And he's hoping that McDuffie's going to make a play for him. It was a poorly thrown football, probably in the wrong spot. We'll see. We'll see a lot of corner play tonight that won't be as well done as what McDuffie did as far as stripping the ball. Mm -hmm. Right. Ross Wilmsmeyer kicks, and the punt is a beauty because it goes out of bounds and around the 10 yard line. They'll mark it off. Jacksonville will start deep. In fact, at the five. But they do lead. The Jaguars up seven to nothing. On weekends, the game comes in the arms of Jimmy Smith. He catches it for a big game. Got by Buckley, and it's all the way out to the 45-yard line. If you give a guy like Mark Brunell that kind of time in the pocket, he will deliver a ball right on target. Jimmy Johnson's defense likes to play in your face, so the opportunities for big plays and penalties against them are there for the taking if you can protect your quarterback. Well, it's something that Jacksonville's been talking about all week. They haven't seen a lot of this coverage so far this season. They've been dying. They call it press coverage. They're going to, that's not the last time we're going to see it. Here's Taylor. And finally, after two plays, gained 77 and then 41 yards, Derek Rogers comes up to say, enough of that stuff, a yard loss. See right here, Mark Brunel standing in the pocket. He's sitting, he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. He's taking every available ounce of time and takes a hit right as he delivers the football, but it's still too much time for him. Yeah, Robert Jones got there way late. By that time, the damage was done well downfield. Second and 11 from the 44. There, no gain. It'll be third down and 11. Tim Bowens, the left tackle. You know, Jimmy John and Jimmy Johnson was telling us uh, last night that uh, Bowens and Gardner, their two inside tackles, have been playing real stout against the run, and that's you need a good, solid centerpiece of your defense. Those two guys right there, along with Zach Thomas, make it awful difficult to run in the middle. That's why Fred Taylor had to cut it back, and you need good pursuit on the backside on that first long run that he had. Neither one of them great pass rushers, so they go to the sideline in the nickel. Third and 11, and in comes Tavian Banks as the third down back, the rookie from Iowa. Miami showing blitz, and here they come. Good protection, going deep, one-on-one, -on -one, reaching out and off the fingertips of Keenan McCardell with the coverage by Patrick Sertain, the second-round draft choice, the rookie from Southern Mississippi. Man, do they take chances on defense. Uh, it's... It could be an awfully long night if, if Keenan holds on to that football, but this will be what we will see time and again tonight from the Jaguar offense playing against those physical corners. But you can't ask Sertain to stay with McCardell there. Yeah, you can't ask Brunel to throw the ball any better than that right on McCardell's hands. Brian Barker to punt. Bounces at the three, skips into the end zone. Miami will take it at the 20-yard line. 8.56 left opening quarter at Altel Stadium in Jacksonville where the Jaguars lead the Dolphins 7 to nothing. The Nissan Frontier could become a prized possession. Our aerial coverage provided tonight by Budweiser as you look down into Altel Stadium, home of the Jaguars since they came into the National Football League in 1995. They went to the AFC Championship game in 96 and last year out in the wild card round to the Denver Broncos in the playoffs. John Avery is in the game up to the 24. We talked about Avery, the rookie, and he and Abdul Jabbar will split time tonight in the backfield. But the Dolphins, despite the fact they've philosophically decided it's going to be run, 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 over the years, Dan Marino has seen this same type of rushing attack. In fact, when you look at the numbers for Dan in all of his years with the Dolphins, and what they are right now, the numbers are very similar in terms of yardage per game and yards per carry. And that can't fly in Jimmy Johnson's system. Those numbers, rushing-wise, have got to get better. 
Second down and six from the 24-yard line, and Molino flag is thrown, and the play is whistled dead before it started. Johnny Greer is the ref tonight. Prior to the snap, false start, 76, offense, still second down. You know, Dan, it's got to be awful tough for these uh, tackles. We talk about it every week on the road. You have to really pay attention. You have to concentrate and focus on the snap of the football because you can't hear your quarterback. That's James Brown, the right tackle, and Boomer makes a good point. And there's uh, what Al was talking about. Look at 83 to 97. Just look at those numbers. And now look at 98 with all of this emphasis on the running game. Uh, nearly identical. I, I think the emphasis is uh, in the papers and in the minds of people. I, I just don't think that they have the receivers that they used to have. So he doesn't feel comfortable. We started with 83 because that was Marino's first year, and O.J. McDuffie goes over the middle, gets position on Beasley, and makes a fine catch to advance the chain. And that was a terrific catch, and Dan Marino is used to having two guys on the field that can do that for him. Whether it be Keith Jackson or Eric Green at tight end, whether it be Duper or Clayton or Irving Fryer or Fred Barnett. And right now, O.J. McDuffie is his go-to guy. He's the guy that he feels comfortable with throwing the football to. Outstanding catch. First down from the 34-yard line. Halfway through the opening quarter. End around. They give it to McDuffie, who gets a nice block. And then he's taken down, ridden down hard at the 40-yard line. Stanley Pritchett through the block. And then Chris Hudson came up to make the hit. But two looked at O.J. McDuffie carrying that ball. And McDuffie kind of hopping a little bit. But, hey, he was not trying to evade that tackle. He saw Hudson coming. And O.J. said, well, heck, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay a lick on you, too. Hey, it's nice to see a receiver hey, do that every now and, turn, and again. Oh, uh, well, watch O.J. finish this thing. There you go. There you go. You think you learned that at Penn State? No. That's the way a wide receiver finishes it off. Second down and five. Molino runs it to the outside, and it's off the fingertips of Paris Copeland. And that's what you're talking about right there. You can see that Danny is frustrated. He wants him to make that catch. Paris Copeland just got here with the Miami Dolphins, so he's basically new to this whole system. And you can see Danny's used to having those balls caught for him. Yeah, Copeland was released uh, by Tampa Bay in their final cut, signed just two weeks ago by the Dolphins. And that's and the reason why, right there. That was a uh, special delivery right on the hands. You got to make those catches. Third down and five from the 39-yard line. 7-0 Jacksonville on a Fred Taylor 77-yard run. Little swing pass caught by Avery, and the rookie, no place to run, is tackled at the 37-yard line. Ronaldo Wynn getting in there along with Kevin Hardy, and they're forced to punt. And well, Bryce Pop is the pass rusher to that side, and James Brown tries to cut him and doesn't get him down on the ground, so there's, there's no cutback lane available. And Bryce Pop signs a huge contract here in Jacksonville, and he's earning it. Reggie Barlow to accept Klaus Wilmsmeyer's punt. Good catch, 52 yards. And then Barlow brings it back to the 23-yard line. Jags get it back. 549 left in the opening quarter. 7 to nothing, Jacksonville. Kansas State. Check your local listings for the game in your area this Saturday. From the 23-yard line, the Jaguars begin the drive from there. Freddie Taylor, who put himself into some pretty good company. When Taylor raced 77 for a touchdown, we went back and took a look at all of the guys who had had a 40-yard run from scrimmage in each of three consecutive games, and there is a pretty good list. Moore, Hall of Fame, Brown, Hall of Fame, Sayers, Hall of Fame, Franco Harris, O.J. Simpson. Of course, you go down that list, Barry Sanders will be, and there's Taylor joining that illustrious list. Not bad. Not bad. For a guy that wouldn't be starting, James Stewart would be the starter. Gone. Brunel going deep, flag thrown, and with Jimmy Smith applauding, he thinks obviously it's pass interference on Sam Madison. The question here is, is, was the ball catchable? I think that's what they're discussing. 
Illegal contact. 28. Defense. First down. You know, that's an interesting point, Boomer, because that ball lands way out of bounds. That's right. But he actually hit him probably before. And the, and the, and the, the fact here, too, is, is that Jimmy Johnson says he knows this is going to happen. He has, Watch Smith. He actually has him beat. Badly. <laughs> But when you have aggressive DBs and you're and you're teaching them to be aggressive and to try to make plays, these are the things that are going to happen, and Jimmy accepts that. At least that's what he told us last night. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the case tomorrow in the meetings. Well, I can't believe <laughs> that either Madison or Buckley slept very well last night, knowing that they had to see Smith and Art Cardell all alone tonight. First down from the 33-yard line. He can run. He's as zippy as they come, as mobile as any quarterback in the league, and he shows you why right there. And you're right, Al. Since 1995, he's rushed for more yards than any other quarterback in the NFL. That's how dangerous he is, and he's a smart runner with the football. Well, he damaged his knee last year, missed a bunch of games, and what a scene it was when he returned to the starting lineup here on a Monday night against Pittsburgh in a game that Jacksonville won. That was as emotional a scene as we've seen in a while. Reminiscent of when Jerry Rice came back to play in that game last year for San Francisco. 18-yard pickup and then a draw play on first down. Fred Taylor going next to nowhere. Monday Night Football from Jacksonville is being brought to you by Budweiser. What fresh beer tastes like. AT&T, it's all within your reach. Nissan reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. And First Union, your guide to the financial world. St. John's River flowing through Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville and the Carolina Panthers granted the expansion franchises that each came into the league in 95. One team steadily on the rise, and the other, the Panthers, without a victory this year. Second down and nine. And Brunel's going to throw it away. Funny, Dan, how the two franchises kind of intersected. Carolina said a lot of money for the big, high price free agents, and they both started out. Both teams started out well. Very competitive. Second year in the in championship game for each, but they've intersected, and you've got two teams going in opposite directions now. Well, the biggest difference, obviously, is the situation at quarterback. For those people who don't know, Kerry Collins, the quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, and it's, you know, essentially basically benched himself and took himself off the football field. And over here in Jacksonville, they have a legitimate MVP candidate at quarterback. Third down and nine. And that's caught, but well short of the first down. They go to Reggie Barlow, the kick returner, and extra wide out tackled by Patrick Sertain. The other thing, too, Boomers, they philosophically, Jacksonville said, we, we're going to start out with a younger team. We're going to build through the draft. They made the, a tremendous trade, of course, to get Brunel. They went about it differently than Carolina and did. And Carolina was one of the oldest, if not the oldest team in the National Football League as an expansion team. Well, you There's Wayne Weaver, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and how proud he must be to watch this franchise get better and better. Watchers kick. Fair caught by McDuffie at the 11-yard line. Miami takes it there. Three, ten left in the opening quarter. Jacksonville seven, Miami nothing. Thomas on the right. <laughs> Great-looking character, Jason Taylor, the Miami defense resting now. That's how every middle linebacker should look. Jason Taylor <laughs> got really good pressure on Mark Brunel last time. Planted him hard. begin from the 10-yard line late in the first quarter Moreno hangs in the pocket then slings it off the fingertips and incomplete Aronde Gadsden the intended receiver now the only thing I could tell you as far as Danny is concerned in the pocket when he drops back he's, he's not feeling comfortable in the pocket because he doesn't have the confidence in delivering the ball downfield you know I've been there my last year in New York we had a collection of free agents and trade that came in late and when you drop back as a quarterback, you want to be able to deliver a ball to a guy that you know is going to be where you expect them. So, so how do you work your way through that? Well, there's really no way you can because you don't have time. I mean, the NFL season is, is upon us, and he's got to work through it now. Second and ten, and that pass is off the fingertips and almost intercepted. Through the hands of McDuffie, almost intercepted by the rookie Darius. 
Well, Jimmy Johnson told Leslie before the start of the game that, that he was going to go to the air, that he just wasn't going to relentlessly pound the ball into the line, and he is. He's put the ball in Dan Marino's hands. And that one was way too yeah. high for O.J., but, you know, and he'll be, he'll be looking for O.J. all night long, I'm telling you, because, again, the guy that he has the most confidence in. Well, O.J. McDuffie is off to a very good start in this football game. Yes, he he can't be doing a whole lot more. Miami's play selection so far, four runs, nine passes. Here comes the 10th on third and 10. And Marino throws into traffic. It is caught, but a little short of the first down as Dave Thomas provided the coverage on the play. Gadsden comes up with it, but as you can see, about a half yard shy. So a nine and a half yard game on a third down. And Gadsden made a nice catch on that. That was low and behind Gadsden. Again, but Danny, Danny has a way of throwing the football and giving his receiver an opportunity to make the play and not allowing the defender to make the play. And he's been notorious for doing that throughout his entire career. And sometimes the ball doesn't look like it's accurate, but he is accurate. He knows where to put it. Wilmsmeyer to punt it. Barlow back to accept it. It's a short kick. It's only a 34-yard kick. And then taken down. Nice open field tackle by Bernie Parmalee. And a good thing, too. Vita got around the corner. There was a sizable chunk of real estate there. Bernie doesn't make that tackle. Marino on the phone. C calling for help. Yeah. <laughs> Says Yatiel get back. Wilmsmeyer got shaken up. Yatiel Green, their number one draft choice, as you see what happened to Wilmsmeyer here. <laughs> Ouch. Hurt himself. Bunning is a tough job. Yes. It looks like it's a quad, huh? Looks like he hurt his quad a little bit. First down at the 47-yard line. Reggie Barlow in in place of Jimmy Smith right now. Fred Taylor picks up the yard. Jimmy Smith went back to the locker room after the last series, reaching for the back of his leg, so the wide receiver is not out there right now, and Reggie Barlow is in, in place of him. Hamstring strain is the report on Jimmy Smith and should return is what they're telling us. And right now you're seeing uh, illustrated on that last play the Miami defense really trying to muster up some enthusiasm a little intensity. They realize that they're on the verge of being backed into their own territory. They're trying to come up with a big play. Second and nine Freddie Taylor swinging to the outside to the 47 Freddie Taylor tackled by Buckley a guy who at the end of last season Tom Coughlin when they were blown out by Denver in the wildcard game on the plane on the way back he said we've got to revamp this running game. They got rid of Natron Means. They knew they had James Stewart, but they said you can never have enough good running backs. And then, we, and, and then in the draft, he opts to go with the, the local kid. They wanted to work on their run defense a little bit, too. They only gave up 310 yards to Denver. Yep, Terrell Davis had a tremendous day. And then Derek Lavelle also ran for over 100 yards that afternoon. Third down and four. Shotgun, fake inside give. Brunel throws on the run, wide open, and coming back to make the catch is Reggie Barlow. Great adjustment by Barlow. Marion makes the tackle. So Barlow, basically the kick returner, but an extra wide out and trying to win a spot in a few more offensive formations. Boomer, I don't know what you call that play. I call that really attractive. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I call that is an athletic quarterback who sucks up a defender and then throws it in behind him. And yeah. Barlow does a nice job of standing on the sideline and giving Mark Brunel a target. These are the things you can do with an athletic quarterback right here. And Mark's eyes are always upfield looking to make a play. A lot of misdirection. That was a good-looking play. First down from the 27-yard line. Wide open. This is Damon Shelton. And the fullback has it inside the 10 down to the 8. Chris Palmer, the offensive coordinator, sending in the call and looking now at a first and goal. Their offensive game plan is going to be to work Miami's speed and pursuit against them. So he's been going to run a lot of play action, play fakes, and things of that nature. And that's exactly what happened on this particular play. You fake the run to the right, and you bring your athletic quarterback out to the left and hit the fullback in the flat. End of the first quarter, 7 to nothing, Jacksonville. Monday Night Football returns after this message in the words from our ABC station. The Jets meet New England next Monday at 8 on ABC.
Good day, man. Downtown Jacksonville, the uh, building on the left used to be known as the Independent Life Building. Now it is the AccuSaf Building. So everything has a name change these <laughs> days. First and goal from the eight. And it's a little toss to Banks, who takes it to the two-yard line. Second and goal. That's three plays in a row now where Mark Prudell faked the run one way and then rolled out against the grain. And again, that's Chris Palmer using his offensive playbook to work against the aggressiveness of the Miami defense. You can see everybody chasing. And now he comes against the grain. But when you've got a running game that's been hammering it out for 152 yards a game, the way Jacksonville has been doing, that is something you have to honor. Second and goal from the two, out of the eye. Taylor looking for a second touchdown of the night, and he has it. Well, Fred Taylor grew up a Miami Dolphins fan said, well, that was then and this is now. He's certainly proving that. This All-American from Florida, this is power running. One broken tackle, two broken tackles. Tremendous leg drive to get it into the end zone. Mike Hollis to the point after. Brian Barker holds. Run. And Taylor already with eight carries for 90 yards, two touchdowns. 29 seconds into the second quarter, the Jaguars are up by 14. Take on the New York Jets, I assume going back to Vinny Testaverde after yesterday's performance in St. Louis. Jets, Patriots. Next Monday night to the two-yard line, the kick goes into the arms of John Avery. And the Mississippi rookie brings it back out to the 30. Dolphins trailing by a score of 14 to nothing. Monday night football is being brought to you by Toyota. Get the most out of your day every day. Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. And Microsoft, where do you want to go today? Dolphins want to go to the end zone immediately. Well, maybe not immediately. But maybe a long drive wouldn't be a bad idea. Their defense could use a little rest. They've been hammered pretty uh, pretty well here by Jacksonville. They really have. And I was talking to Jimmy Jackson. You have to score points to win in this league. You can only hold down great offenses for so long. This is an offense right now that, that needs a couple of first downs. To keep it on the ground, we give it to Abdul Jabbar. And Jensen, you know, let's face it, all of the years we've seen the Dolphins, if they were down 14 to nothing, they had the kind of offense. They had the receivers and Dan Marino and, and the people to, to take them from a 14-point deficit to the lead. This is a different story, though. It really is, and they're not playing Buffalo. They're not playing Indianapolis, and they're not playing the Jets. They're playing one of the best offensive teams in football. So you have to be productive on offense as well. And right now, their passing game is non-existent. Mark Duper and, and Mark Clayton seem Irving like Fryer. so long ago. Hey, Irving Fryer, Fred Barnett, uh, the list goes on. Eric Green, Keith Jackson. I mean, how many great offensive players have they had? Now they're getting ready to lose another off, uh, a wide receiver, Lamar Thomas. Right. We talked about Yatiel Green earlier. Green is the kid from Miami, the University of Miami, drafted two years ago. Hurt in preseason in 97. Hurt preseason 98, hasn't played it down. Charles Jordan, another wide receiver, underwent surgery this week, gone for the year. Thomas comes off the field. On and on it goes. The NFL trading deadline is tomorrow, but you know as well as I do, you can't just go out and get a player and stick him in your system and think that he can help you. Second and nine, this is O.J. McDuffie, and he gets tackled by Dave Thomas, about five yards shy of the first. But, Boomer, it is possible to trade for a guy that within a month or six weeks can be of some use. Now, yeah, well, maybe in a month or six weeks. There's some quality out there, some guys who are free agents. And well, if, if they're on the trading block, we don't know that no. either. I, and I can't imagine that a team uh, in this league is going to trade a quality receiver right now unless Miami was going to give up something that was going to be really significant. So they're basically stuck with what they have, and they can hopefully only get better. Third down and four. A little toss to Parmalee, swing to the outside, and Bernie reaches for a first down. Aaron Beasley had him wrapped up, but the veteran Parmalee, who used to drive a UPS truck, reaches out and delivers. 
<laughs> Next day. Yes, sir. Uh, and this was a good play design because it caught Jacksonville inside and it left Bernie Parmalee one-on-one. -on -one. And Beasley actually makes contact with Parmalee about four yards from the first down marker. And that's Boy, a, that was a nice job by Bernie of stretching out. Jeff Lagerman, one of the injured Jaguars, the former Jet. He's gone for the season. The ball at the 42-yard line. Abdul Jabbar going nowhere. Where is Bryce Pop? The thought was to bring Bryce Pop in here and get a lot of sacks. He has 66 sacks in his uh, career. It's a four-time, the last four Pro Bowls, he's been there as a Buffalo Bill. But down here, they use him a little bit differently. He doesn't rush the passer quite as much. And they brought him here for leadership, and they brought him here for toughness. Well, especially the leadership really comes into play now, Boomer, with, with Jeff Lagerman being on the sidelines because Lagerman was the leader of this defensive football team. That role has now fallen to Bryce Pop. Second and 13 from the 39-yard line. Marino slings it. Finally, a man is wide open, and the catch is made by Gadsden, and he takes it to the Jacksonville 40-yard line for a first down. Well, now we're seeing a couple of those first downs that, you know, there's no way to oversell this that they desperately needed. Their defense is getting to sit this out, and that was a, a nice read and finding the soft spot in that zone by Gadsden. You can see what a quarterback sees from behind him, that angle where he wants to throw it in behind the linebackers. And that's a zone, so Gadsden can be a little bit less constructive with his, with his route. That was a 23-yard gain. Now on first down, pressure from the backside. Pop down goes Dan in the arms of a man who is no stranger to the Pro Bowl. Uh, you cannot get in an offensive formation and not count Bryce Pop as a defensive lineman. Even though he's standing up, you know the odds are is that he's going to come. And that time, Pop standing on the end of the line of scrimmage, you have got to count him as a rusher. And you could see Richmond Webb goes down inside when he should have probably turned outside. That was just a mistake by the offensive lineman. And Bryce the Pop, Dolphin. and I'll say this, Bryce Pop deposited Dan Marino as about, as, about as gently as a guy could do it. That's, That's respect. Yes, it is. That's <laughs> his first full sack of the season. And then wide open is Lamar Thomas. So a few moments ago, they were working on Thomas. He was out for a few plays, appears to be injured again, but he makes this catch here, hit by Darius, first down, 26-yard game. Ooh, he looks like it's ripped clear off. He looks like he's hurt, but Danny Marino also looks like he pulled a back muscle or something. What a nice catch that was. Oh, and there's a pretty good collision at the end of this, and Lamar Thomas's helmet is going to get ripped clear off. Right there, the hit by Donovan Darius. And Bracken's hit Marino, and there's an injury timeout. Back in a moment. Right here, as Dan Marino delivers the ball, Tony Bracken comes around and leads with his helmet and catches Dan in the rib. And now that's going to be looked at by Gene Washington, I'm sure, in the NFL office. You cannot lead with your helmet, especially on quarterbacks. On the other end of the play, Lamar Thomas with a lower back injury. He is out after making the catch to give Miami a first down at the 18-yard line. And now the catch is made in the flat out here by Stanley Pritchett. The fullback takes it to the 11-yard line for a gain of seven. Lower back and upper back as well for Lamar <laughs> Thomas. Well, Lamar was hurt, came back, and, and went up and made the tough catch. And we are seeing a, a, a really a drastic change in a Miami Dolphins offensive philosophy. They are throwing so much more than running. There it is. Last year, the Jaguars giving up a ton of yardage and points in the red zone. This year, they lead the league in red zone defense. Movement up front, but no flag, and the ball carrier, Abdul Jabbar, takes it to the one-yard line. I think Kippy Brown is doing a real good job of mixing in plays right now. The Jacksonville defense has played a lot of zone on this particular series, and Dan has found the seams in the holes of the zone. And when you're able to run the football down here on cutbacks, you can see right behind his offensive lineman, staying low and taking shots, 
This is what I think Kippy Brown is envisioned as his offense. Ruddy, Donnelly, and James Brown got it done over on that right side. First and goal from inside the two. Abdul Jabbar gets to the one-yard line, and that's all. Banged back at that spot. Second down and goal. Jimmy Johnson in his third year as a Miami coach. You know, we talk about different coaches and philosophies. You know, Mike Holmgren, when he gets into the red zone, he wants to throw it, and he wants to get it into the end zone as quickly as possible. Jimmy, all those years down in Dallas, wanted to hand it off to Emmett Smith and let him run it in, and that's what he's going to try to do. This will be a good spot for a play-action pass here, however, in second and one. Come up in the eye, spread it out a little bit, and Abdul Jabbar gets banged back again at the one-yard line. McManus right there. So Gerard's defense now stiffening third down and goal. Well, the third consecutive time that they challenged the left side of Jacksonville's defense. Remember the first time Abdul Jabbar gets a nice run and gets the first down. The last two times he's stuck. I, I never liked calling the same play twice in a row. It just it just never works. Even if you score or you run, you know, 10 yards in the first time, it never comes back and works the second time, it seems like. Third down and goal from the two-yard line. The play fake and the toss into the end zone and wide open is Troy Drayton to make the catch. So wide open, Dan almost missed him. <laughs> this is what they call the old Y sneak with the tight end, who's known as the Y in the offense. Kind of makes like he's blocking and going out play side, but then sneaks and drags underneath everybody else in the pursuing defense loses track of him a lot of times boomer you'll see that tight end go to the ground to really try to get lost straight and didn't even have to do it that time he he stayed on his feet and runs across the grain but he uh you better he, hold on to that ball he, now. he had to work <laughs> he had to work for that Olindo Mate for the point after dan marino has now thrown 390 career touchdown passes Number one of all time, 7.41 left in the half. Dolphins get back in it, 14 to 7, Jacksonville. The NFL and the United Way are making a difference. The NFL, the United Way, and you, the power of teamwork. For Miami and the bad news for Jacksonville there's no instant replay this is not a catch watch the ball hit the ground Ooh, man that would have been reversed if replay was still in vogue mm -hmm. Davian Banks runs the kick back huh. to the 22 yard line not, not only did Troy Dayton fool uh, Drayton fool the Jacksonville defense but he must have also fooled the, the officials in their eyes well uh, let's face it from our vantage point here it looked like a catch all the officials were screened mm -hmm. and it was only from that one back angle we we have a lot of cameras here on Monday night the only thing I could tell you is don't count Dan Marino out you know the quarterbacks who are 35 and older guys <laughs> you know what their record is 19 and 5 this year mm -hmm. there it is again he pulls it to his chest but it comes out and strikes the ground you cannot hide from Kenny Wolf and Craig Janoff they know all and see all but you can run but you, you definitely can't hide this is Taylor going nowhere you know, earlier the Jacksonville Jaguars had an opportunity to make a big play and they didn't make it and when you're on the road and you're playing a team like a 4-0 team that has Super Bowl aspirations everybody's picking them a lot of people are picking them you have to make the most of your opportunities if you're Jacksonville you cannot give a road team like Miami any sense of life which is what they have right now Tom Coughlin who does not miss anything <laughs> he doesn't miss a thing second down and 10 from the 22 yard line Taylor on a swing. One thing about Coughlin, he is meticulous, he is organized, as are most coaches. He also, he's, he's great to lip read. We were talking to him last night. One of the problems that he has is that he rounds off his consonants. And when you do that, when you end your adjectives in a G and not an N apostrophe, everybody knows exactly what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I'm talking about. 
I think what he's saying is there have been times where Tom's been a little colorful on the oh, sidelines. Yes. Oh, no, and no, everyone no. watching knows what he was saying. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> that's the layman's uh, explanation. Thank you, Dan. Sir, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Come see me on the Playboy channel. Third down and eight. Oh, and that is intercepted by Terrell Buckley at the 40-yard line. And he brings it back to the 36. Intended for McCardle. And you could see Tom Coughlin screaming at the officials saying he's all over him. He wants interference on Buckley, but again, this is the type of defense that they play. They're right in your back pocket the whole time, and they can make plays. They have some playmakers back there in the secondary. But it's also a problem that has plagued Mark Brunell in the first half, throwing interceptions. He did it two weeks ago against Tennessee, now tonight against Miami by Mark Brunel this time. You want to throw the ball outside and low so the defender doesn't have a chance. He ends up throwing it inside. Terrell Buckley got away with a little push there at the end. But it was a poorly thrown ball that time by Mark Brunel. Now the Dolphins at the 36 with John Avery, the rookie in the backfield. And Marino guns it over the middle and keeps all. Intended for... Great. Then Dan goes down in the arms of Seth Payne. Now let's go back and look at one of the matchups. This was on the interception thrown by Mark Brunell. Jason Taylor against Tony Baselli. Taylor's number 99. There's the jam by Baselli. Now Brian DeMarco gets a shot at Taylor. They're going at it. Now Taylor's going to see it's intercepted. Oh, I can come back and be a blocker. <laughs> and I'll take my swing at DeMarco. So when, you, when, you throw an <laughs> when you throw an interception as a quarterback, you got to get your head on the swivel. You got to start looking around because those defensive linemen and linebackers are coming after you. They got a free shot at it. Absolutely, and they're going to take every opportunity they can. Jason Taylor did not pass up his free swing in the batting cage. Second and ten at the 36. slant caught by O.J. McDuffie to the 23. That's a first down. Got inside Beasley. Oh, what a nice throw that time by Dan Marino. It's going right off the back shoulder of Kevin Hardy, number 51, who was going out into the flat with Troy Drayton, and he threw it right on time, and he put it right where you want it. Right in behind 51. 51 never even saw the football. 13-yard gain. One of the quickest releases in the NFL, Dan Marino. Well, have, you ever, have you ever seen a quicker? I might have been a little bit quicker. I think when I was a rookie. <laughs> this is Avery. Nowhere to go. Joel Schmingy knocks him down in the backfield. That just means we didn't want to get hit, so we want to get rid of the ball as quickly as we can, especially on three-step drops. He looks like he's throwing as hard as he's ever thrown, too. He looks, I mean, he looks real good tonight. They're giving him an opportunity to play. They're not guarding against not having receivers or you know, they're letting them throw on first down, which is the key for every quarterback. Well, it has been a tough week in Miami if you are a receiver on the Dolphins football team. And one guy who read the newspapers and who got excited about it is this guy, O.J. McDuffie. He's playing a whale of a football game. Four catches tonight for 43 for him. Second down and 13. Marino throws and getting tangled up, but no flag. McDuffie and Beasley. I've, I've been hard on him as well, and, and O.J. McDuffie has not scored a touchdown in his last 16 games, but he has come to play tonight. He's made some nice plays, and again, he is the guy that Dan Marino feels most comfortable with. He has to because he's the one who's played with him the longest. Well, one thing about McDuffie, he's the primary receiver, but as you can see, in the equivalent of an entire season, he hasn't scored a touchdown. He last scored on... September 21st of 97. But he's the featured guy now. You know, he's the guy that takes over. He's the, he's the go-to guy for Dan Marino. Third and 13. Uh -oh. And that is intercepted at the nine by Aaron Beasley. And Marino misses him, and then he gets spun down at the 45 by Kevin Donnelly. Jimmy is just livid over on the sideline. Jimmy just hopping up and down mad. Boy, you don't get many opportunities like that to get back in it here before halftime and have it blow up in your face. 
It was a great play, play by Beasley. He under, undercut the route. The ball gets tipped at the line of scrimmage and floats. But give Beasley a lot of credit. He followed the receiver inside and played underneath him. Well, you're right. Somebody got their hand on that ball. First down from the 45-yard line after the team's trade interceptions. And this is Taylor for a gain of two. Post interception look. Those are the things that just Jim, Jimmy Johnson just despises. Now he's going crazy, and you see him kind of pull back because Dan Marino's right next to him. If Dan Marino were down the other side, he'd be screaming, What is he thinking about? Why is he doing that? Well, I wonder if it was visible to him that the ball got tipped at the line of scrimmage. You're right, it got tipped and it took off. Oh, uh, but I, you know what? <laughs> that was classic right there. Second and seven. He's also working television, so he knows the camera's always on him. Right, exactly. This is Banks. To the 47, Jimmy went to work for Fox, and he did a great job after he left the Cowboys for two years, and he had talked about perhaps never coaching again, and a lot of people close to him thought there was a chance that Jimmy would not coach again. Oh, no way. This guy was born to coach. Well, born to coach the Miami Dolphins. He was right, born yes. to coach somewhere in South Florida. Yes. Well, he has to be on his boat. That's why yeah. he likes his boat. Mm -hmm. He wasn't leaving the state of Florida. Well, he got what he wanted. In fact, he didn't even want to go as far as Tampa or Jacksonville. Third and one. Oh, and stopped in his tracks by Tim Bowens. Is what Fred a play. Taylor. Woo, what a play by Bowens. The defense rose up again for the Miami Dolphins. Give them an enormous amount of credit with the way they're playing right now. Quentin New Year is the center who's coming over there trying to block Bowens. Not very successfully. Parker the punt. Fair catch signal at the 14 yard line by O.J. McDuffie. 232 remaining in the opening half. A reminder tomorrow the hot comedy smash, the Hughley. A great new show on eight. Well, the Miami defensive football team did their job. They had a discouraging turnover by their offensive football team, and they forced Jacksonville into a three and out. That, you know, that's the way a, a good quality defensive team goes to work. This situation right now, with 2.32 to go in the second quarter, Dan, will give me a real perspective as to what Miami thinks of its passing game, because in past years, Miami would go into their two-minute offense right here, line up with four wides, and start throwing it all over the field. Talking about Miami rushing the ball against Indian opening day, 4.6, against Buffalo in game two, four, three, and then against Pittsburgh, you saw the 2-9 on a sloppy field, then last week down to 2-3, tonight 1-8. League average is four. And this is Parmalee. A flag is down. Bernie takes it up to the 25-yard line. Might be offsides by the defense, but what I like is I see that the, the Dolphins are in their two-minute offense. Well, most certainly one of the Jags fell into the neutral zone. Offside. Defense. The right end. Lined up in the neutral zone. The penalty is declined. First down. And Kelvin Critchett was out to that side. He just kind of wanted to go and then tried to stop. Watch him there on the bottom. Watch him kind of oops. <laughs> That's the worst of both worlds. You take yourself out of the play by being on all fours, and you're in the neutral zone. First down up at the 25. And that is caught over the middle, pulled in by Gadsden after the 42-yard line. But go without a huddle. They have all three timeouts, and they have the two-minute warning as well, which we have reached at this point. Good quality pass protection there by the Miami offensive line to give Marino a good look at the field. Aerial coverage provided tonight by Budweiser as the Miami Dolphins try to square the score if they can at the half in the game in which they trail 14 to nothing. Now it's 14-7. They have a first and 10 at their own 42. Two minutes to play in all three timeouts at Dan Marino's disposal. And here they come. Not yet. Not yet. Snap. 
Offense. Mark Dixon. All right, Lily first and 15. Let's check in with Chris Berman. All right, Al, thank you. Coming up on our Toyota halftime show, the ESPN Top 10. Cincinnati sleep. Yeah, man, they were sleeping yesterday. How about those Bengals? I think he might be talking about that little chicanery with Neil O'Donnell. Yes, sir. Yeah. First and 15, and that's caught on the near side, and the catch by Rwanda Gadsden. That was a good route by Gadsden. That time he got separation, and Dan threw the ball correctly, threw it outside on the sideline, and Gadsden came back down his, his stem and caught the ball and didn't give Figures a chance to make a play on it. And the more things like this will happen for Gadsden, the more balls he'll get thrown to him because the quarterback will develop even more confidence in as, as the season goes on, let alone the game here. Well, with Deion Figures over on this side replacing Dave Thomas, he is the guy I would think Miami would want to go after. Second one after a 14-yard game, and they don't get the first down here. That's Bernie Parmalee, Gary, third in the yard. Now that hurts when you don't pick up that first down because now the passing game, you, you, now you got to concern yourself with getting that first down. You know, the, that that would have been real nice for Miami to be able to do that right there. Absolutely, and I'm watching Jimmy Johnson on the sideline, and he's telling Dan Marino, let the clock run. And he wants to shorten the game. He doesn't want to give Jacksonville another opportunity if they don't make it here. Third and one, they have a ton of time with their three timeouts. But they have to convert, and the question is, on this little short pass, did they? And I don't think so. Little short. I don't think so. Now that's a short completion. Ed Perry, one of the tight ends, plays the other side from Drayton. It's, it's amazing. Jimmy Johnson keeps saying, just let the clock run. Let the clock run. Don't worry about it. And you can see Danny's probably a little frustrated. He probably would want to go for it, but they're not going to go for it here. They're going to punt it. Fourth down, half a yard. There's no way they're going to go for it. Jimmy talks about field position. He talks about playing good, solid defense. He's not going to go for it at this point in time and, and, and give uh, Jacksonville an opportunity. But what the Jaguars could have taken the time out there. What a waste, though, to have a third and one and run a pre-designed pattern and complete the ball for a grand total of about six inches. Right. They had a second and one and a third and one. You know what they could do, Dan? They could do what every team does in this situation. And it never works. <laughs> We've seen this as <laughs> well. You know, this, this I think, is a, an occasion where no, you're right. Punt. Here comes the punt. They're not going to go for no. it. Oh, of course not. Well, not. I'm afraid there's no deception there when you let the clock run all the way down. If you know Jimmy Johnson's philosophy, you know it's don't take chances, play smart football, it's discipline. In the meantime, they have Olindo Mate in the punt because Wilms Meyer, you'll recall, was hurt before, came off the field. So Mate, who is the place kicker and backup punter, will take this snap. Of course, it doesn't take much of a punt from here. Just a little pooch. Okay. More like a full spaniel. And there's contact made. That's why we have the flag. Barlow made the fair catch. Nate Chiquette made contact with him. You think that would be interference? Well, you got to give the guy a yard. Mike Westhoff, the special teams coach, uh, is obviously concerned. You, you've got to stay at least one yard away. Even if he bobbles it, from I guess. the receiver. Larry well, you don't know if he bobbles. Once yeah. he bobbles it, you can go right, in there. Right, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, I don't Air know about that. Oh, well. Number 19 of the kicking team. Oh, I don't know. 15 yards. First down. Well, he, Jacquette appeared to be more than a yard away from the receiver when the ball got there. That's 15 yards. I, I can see it 15 yards if the guy goes flying into him and it's a personal foul. Boy. Well, I don't know about that. that yeah. That's a touchy call. Uh, let's take a look. You tell me, do you think he's a yard? Oh, man, I just, that's a bad call. I have to agree with you there, Dan. Yes. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> well that's that brought, hey, how about that? That brought a smile to my face. <laughs> Stop those presses. 30 seconds remaining. First half from the 28 yard line. Jacksonville on the shotgun. They're well to take off. And now to the 40. There's a flag down as he's, he calls a timeout, but he didn't have to be using the flag. It's going to come back anyway. 
Little jawing going on back there. Tony Baselli, one of the guys uh, that might be involved in this. Illegal hands to the face. Number 71. Offense. Go first down. First penalty of the night against Jacksonville that was enforced. There was another one that was declined. The crowd moans like it can't possibly be a penalty on, <laughs> on Tony. Working against Jason Taylor. Oh, yeah, oh there there's the go. left hand. Do that. Yep, he got it up there. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, is how big Tony Baselli is. I mean, 6'7", 330 pounds. That, and how well he moves for that size. And first and 20, they give the ball to Damian Banks. And the rookie third down back on first down takes the ball all the way to the 27 with 12 seconds left and puts them in field goal range. He's out of bounds at the 31, so it's a 48-yarder at this point. Just a simple draw play. Well, this is what happens when you play man defense in the secondary. Your secondary people are concerned about the wide receivers downfield. If you can get your back through the line of scrimmage, Zach Thomas is going to be blocked by a lineman who is uncovered. And Tavian Banks is pretty quick. He can run down the sideline and outrun mostly everybody off the Dolphin defense. 51 yards to Jacksonville in a position half running out the clock. The next thing you know, they're in field goal range and Brunel will slide to a halt and call time out of the 28 and they'll bring in Hollis for what will amount to a 45-yard field goal attempt. Coughlin, <laughs> that we talked about, Oregon, he is on top of everything. I, I think that when you look at what he did with this football team, given a third and a fifth round draft pick to Green Bay from Mark Brunel to start it off drafting, drafting Boselli that year, and then this past year, trading Rob Johnson for a, a one, which is the ninth overall, which is Fred Taylor, and a four, which is Tavian Banks. That is good personnel management, and he doesn't nearly get the credit for what he does down here. Well, if people forget, the, uh, I mentioned at the top of the show, he was the number one choice of the New York Giants to take over when Ray Hanley was fired after the 92 season. And he turned it down, in effect, because he did, wasn't going to have the control he needed. George right. Young was still very much entrenched with the Giants at that point. And then the Giants went to watch that second, and he opted to go to Chicago and then wound up with Dan Reeves. Would you also say maybe that what Buffalo was willing to give for Rob Johnson is an indication of the scarcity of guys that can oh, play quarterback I, I think in it, I think it's desperation. I think when Chicago gave a one to Seattle for Rick Meyer, it shows you yeah. that people are willing to take chances. And, and he wasn't going to do that. And he did a great job in getting Mark Brunel here. 45-yard attempt for Hollis. Barker puts it down. And Hollis, who's been erratic this season, misses this one. And that'll really get Coughlin crazy. They set him up for a field goal attempt. The guy has been to the Pro Bowl, but for Hollis this year, it's been a tough year. Jimmy Johnson jogging off the field. His team lucky to be down only by seven. 14-7, Jaguars at the half. And we'll return after this message for the National I don't think they change anything. I think they'll just keep doing what they have. Defensively, I think they're a little surprised that Miami has, has run the ball only 13 times and passed the ball 23 times. I think that's caught Jacksonville a little bit off guard. Yeah. It really has, and, and actually caught me off guard, too. But yeah. we knew coming in that Jimmy Johnson was going to take some chances down the field. Dan Marino has completed 15 passes for about 145 yards of TD and an interception. So maybe the passing attack is back for Miami. I don't know. I can't figure this out. It's a good game. No question about that. As Jacksonville tries to stay unbeaten, Miami tries to stay in the tie for first in the AFC East with New England. 14-7 at the half. Pullback loosening up on the stationary bike. Dan Marino getting ready to come in offensively because the Dolphins will receive. Mike Hollis who missed a 45-yard field goal attack at the end of the half. Sends this kickoff down to the four-yard line where Brock Marion Brings it out past the 20, a flag goes down, and Marion is tackled up at the 32-yard line. Johnny Greer will make the call. Blocking below the waist. And it's against the Jag. 
against the kicking team. Yeah, Here we go. Oh. Yep. This Lip, is, this Lip is, readers unite. <laughs> round those consonants, Tom. <laughs> this is one of the things that has really hurt the Jaguars thus First far this foul, season. Uh, blocking below the waist on the kicking team. First down. In the old days, you used to run down and be able to throw yourself into the wedge and try to undercut it. Same rules apply to you as they do to the return team. You got to stay above the waist. Let's see if we can take a look at it here. On the top, there's the wedge. Yeah, and you, that's number 32, who throws himself, Mike Logan, right into the bottom of the wedge, below the knees. Can't do it. Good call. Now it's Drayton on first down, and the tight end wrestles his way forward for a gain of three. Let's get a report from Leslie Visser. Leslie. Now I talked to both coaches at halftime, and they disagree on one major point. Tom Coughlin said that Troy Drayton's touchdown pass was definitely dropped. He called it a terrible call. I asked Jimmy Johnson. He said, what? Troy definitely caught the ball. Now, what a shock. <laughs> one of the things that has really hurt the Jaguars this year, guys, is, is the field position that they've given up on the kickoff returns. They're the third worst in the NFL, and with that penalty, it pushes them way above their average. Second down and six. Marino throws, juggled, not caught. Gadsden flagged down. Gadsden covered by Dion Figures. Marino's pass intended for Gadsden. Pass to the Ferris. 86. Offense. Gadsden. Jimmy's swimming up at the <laughs> replay screen. Jimmy's going to E-Gads. Really don't see it there. He probably pushed off to get inside of uh, figures. One of the things that receivers most of the time get away with. And it's about creating separation for his quarterback to throw him the football. What I like to see is I like to see a receiver who is aggressive in getting open. Well, I think every receiver has spent years watching Michael Irvin <laughs> use his hands in an attempt to get open, Boomer. One of the best in the league. One of the best in the history of the NFL yeah. of getting open like that. Second down, 17 for Marino. Another flag, two in fact. I think we got holding all over the place in the Miami offensive line. Well, they catch a break with the block below the waist by Mike Logan on the kickoff and uh, Miami doing their best to do absolutely nothing with it. And going backwards. Holding, 61, offense, it's declined. Third down. Tim Ruddy, a Tim Ruddy, a pretty accomplished center, gets caught by surprise, and Ronaldo in. He's just on the shoulder, moving past him. He has no choice in his mind but to tackle him. That's what he did. I don't have a problem with that one, no, Dan. No, no quarterback ever is, does. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Third and 17, declining the penalty. They have to get to the Jacksonville 45, and they get to the 38-yard line on the catch by the tight end, Ed Perry. And another flag. And I'll tell you, Travis Davis is going to get hit with a rough in the past right here. You could not come flying in like a missile and hit the quarterback up around the head or late. That's exactly what Davis did, and Marino took a, a wicked shot to the teeth. Take a look here. Actually, it wasn't. It was number 32. Oh, it's Mike, Mike Logan. Logan. You cannot do that. Personal oh, foul. Oh. Roughing the passer. Ooh. First down. Well, not only that, but he, he did the worst thing in the eyes of the NFL that you can do. He launched himself at Dan Marino. Let's watch this again. He went airborne oh. and then led with his head. I, said, I will oh. tell you that that oh. will be a suspension, and that will be a huge fine. Well, the big fine, I think, is for sure. The suspension. Oh, I'll tell you, it's a possibility, but you can't launch and lead with your head. I've seen hits worse, 
not not as bad as that one received suspension. I, I I from the 22 yard line. The catch is made by McDuffie, who turns it back inside, tackled by Dion Figures, gain of eight to the 15 yard line. Well, if you let number 13 get comfortable in the pocket and you start letting him deliver these passes against these zones out here, he will pick you apart, and that's exactly what's going on. There's another look. Oh man. Boy, and keep in mind, Logan, was was he not the guy that got the penalty going below the waist? He was <laughs> on the kickoff. Mike, this has not been a, a real all-star series for you. Second and two inside the 15. Dolphins trying to tie it up. Over the middle, that's a first down. It's caught by Lamar Thomas. It'll be first and goal from the eight-yard line. He's tackled by Tom McManus. Dan Marino this season, the numbers have been way, way down. In fact, in, in one game against the Jets in 88, he threw for more yardage that day, 521, than they had in four games compositely coming into the game tonight. You know, and, and I, and I think the games before, though, was he was a victim of circumstance where they didn't really have to throw until last week against New York. But tonight, they're making a concerted effort to throw on first down. They're throwing by choice. Right, exactly. First and goal from the eight-yard line. And Stopped in the backfield. It's it can't, his choice should be to throw right now. Because <laughs> they can't run. <laughs> Kippy Brown, the offensive coordinator on the right. Kippy taking over. He was the running backs coach when Jimmy Johnson let Gary Stevens go. Gary had been there for a long time. Gary's out in Oakland, I believe, right now. He Kippy was, as you said, the running backs coach for two years. There's Marino tonight, as you can see, yards per pass, which is a uh, good indication of the Look at that, of yards per pass coming into tonight, 5.13. Fred Taylor was averaging more per carry running the ball than Marino was per pass throwing. Second and goal from the 13th. Pressure on, throws short, nobody home. Beasley is the defender, and Marino under heat as he got rid of it. Third down. Well, he saw Tony Brackens coming from his backside. You now when you're but, when you when you read about the Miami Dolphins and what they've accomplished thus far in the first four games of the season you know you say where is this 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 great quarterback that you have how come he is not playing how come you're not giving him an opportunity to play and he caught a break on that one but the fact of the matter is is you have a volatile player back there that can make things happen for you third down and goal Flag is down. Marino throws. Nobody there. This was no play. This is no play. Ball start prior to the snap. Number 76. Offense. Still third down. Right tackle James Brown, the hardest working man on the offensive line. Not feeling very good right now. <laughs> right now. JB and I were it's together. In the bag. <laughs> <laughs> JB and I were together at the Jets, and he used to flinch a little bit out there. So some things never change. <laughs> I used to have to calm him down. JB, don't worry about it. Just relax out here. You're all right. Well, he's an accomplished uh, offensive lineman, but again, the woes of a tackle on the road. It's tough right. to hear. Especially here, this crowd is into it. Third and goal from the 18 yard line. All right, time Richmond Webb. And Mark Dixon moved on the left side of the line. Ball start. Number 63. Offense. That's Mark Dixon. Richmond Webb went with him on the other side. And now Tom Coughlin, <laughs> he can't hear enough noise out of this crowd. And right now, Miami's got to make sure that... Uh, even if they don't complete anything, they don't work their way too far out of field goal range. It was first and goal at the eight. It is now third and goal at the 22. This is a very demonstrative Tom Coughlin. Juggled snap. Oh, picked uh, off. Flag down. This is picked off by the rookie, Donovan Darius, who runs it out of the end zone. Ed Perry is saying that he was interfered with. Beyond number 45, Travis Davis right on the goal line. This was Travis Davis this time. 
try to get across the middle of the field, and Davis actually pushed him down. Pass interference. 45. Defense. First down. Travis Davis. All right, Dan's trying to work the middle of the field. And that's Ed Perry, I believe, is back up tight end, number 89. Knocked down from behind. Whoa! Well, that's Ooh. after you throw the inter after you throw the interception, man. You better watch out. <laughs> is it? That is an he knows example better than that. of not having your head on a swivel. <laughs> he knows better than that. First and goal after it was third and goal from the 18. They give it to Abdul Jabbar and he can't get in. Okay, okay, watch it. Well, it looked like Abdul Jabbar, Allen Boomer, was going to get in on second effort, but then Tony Brackens came loose and put a solid crunching shot on Jabbar and knocked him back. It looked like he was going to break the first tackle, but then Brackens, talk about cleaning up, watch this. Right there, it looks like Jabbar is going to come loose, but then Brackens really gets a good shoulder on him. Second and goal at the one. They were here before and couldn't run it in. They try it again with Abdul Jabbar. Touchdown. Oh. He just did get oh. in. Oh. Oh. His body was in, but I don't think the football was in. Well, it's too late to argue it now, but you're right. His hips made it in, but he was doing a pirouette in the air. Oh, doing I, a don't helicopter. Know. I don't know. I'm sure we'll have a great shot of it. I just. <laughs> and, you know, this is a remarkable turnabout, the way that Jacksonville's dominated this game. All right, watch the ball, not Jabbar. Well, he lands on the goal line. Yep, yep, the All ball right. landed on the goal good line. Good call. Broke the plane. Extra point by Mate is good. And what amazingly, things... Al and Boomer, this is a tie football game. It is. Oh. Jacksonville did themselves in on that drive three penalties for 51 yards against the jaguars and we're tied at 14. well jabbar he played at ucla his name was Sharman shaw then he changed it and he scored the touchdown here marino going over the photos the kickoff comes down to the eight yard line reggie barlow to run it back from there and out of bounds at the 25 yard line so now Brunel on the Jags will have it for the first time in the third quarter 10-19 left in the third 14-14 in Jacksonville what's so hard college football this Saturday right here on ABC the Jaguars now from the 25 yard line on first down and Fred Taylor starts their first possession with a Three-yard pickup, a fumble, and Jacksonville winds up with the football. Zach Thomas extracted the football, and then it was recovered by Pete Mitchell, the tight end. And Taylor is down. And they're already missing Jimmy Smith, who has a strained hamstring, and the wide receiver's return is listed as questionable. So Smith out for the moment, and Taylor out for the moment. Jaguars caught a break there, boy. Sure did. Oof. For Miami Dolphins and the lone Jaguar, Pete Mitchell. It didn't. I didn't see anything extraordinary. It looked like it happened to his legs, Boomer. So, hopefully, not too bad a news for Fred Taylor. The 12th Street Warriors about to play the game of the season. This time. So the part of being a middle linebacker is getting there. The second part, doing something when you get there. What a hit by Zach Thomas. Just knocked that ball cleanly away from Fred Taylor. See him holding his shoulder, but he got up and jogged off the field over on the Jacksonville sideline. He looked pretty good jogging off. Banks comes into replacing, and Brunel gets buried. So the Dolphins very fired up right now as Kenny Mixon, the rookie from LSU, got there first, and then Zach Thomas cleaned up. And Brunel is a little bit shaken up. Look at Mark Brunel get up. Man, they got there quick. Whoa, man. Right now, the momentum is all on the side of the Dolphins. They came out, ran it right down the field, got a quick score, and now the defense is starting to dig in. Well, they did a double loop. There's one loop coming up the middle with Mixon, and then the other loop around the outside by Thomas. 
That is the old original meet me at the quarterback. First sack of the game for the Dolphins. Here it is again. again. Pressure from the secondary, and Brunel forced to throw it away on the corner blitz by Jerry Wilson. And Jimmy screaming that that's intentional grounding. You know, if you're between the tackles, you can't just throw it away. He got away with one there. I, I am really impressed. It looks like Mark Brunel is a little bit dinged right now. The defense of the Miami Dolphins just brought it on right there and changed the entire momentum of this football game. Did he get outside the tackles, Boomer? Take a look. I don't know. It's close. Thin tackle. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get outside Baselli. No way. <laughs> Blockers punt fielded by Terrell Buckley. Oh, oh, oh. Buckley gets a great block and then returns it to the 50-yard line. One thing you know about Jimmy Johnson's oh, right team flag. is going to be a rough and tumble, quick-paced football game, especially on the defense and special team side of the football. This flag was thrown well after the play was over. This has got to be some type of a personal foul or something that happened way after the play. I wonder if it was taunting because we got a big shot and they were standing over the guy that was on the ground. Personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 53 of the receiving team, taunting. Boomer. Yep. Yes, I know what I'm talking about. Well, it's Larry Izzo who, who, laid, who laid the block out and then did the taunt. He just knocked Witted, Alvis Witted. I don't know what he said, but it must have been good. <laughs> so gets called for taunting, and it had to be verbal because there was certainly no physical taunting involved. He didn't now, you know, stand you're... over Witted and, and, you know, make gestures or anything like that. You can knock the heck out of each other, but you can't call each other names. Oh, yeah? <laughs> is it saying, do you know what the definition of is, is, Witted? <laughs> Sticks and stones will hurt or break my bones or something. Now, th this is as close as Larry Izzo gets to Witted. And watch on the left of your screen. There's the flag. Oh, you can't call somebody a name. <laughs> well, I, I can't imagine what he must have said to draw a flag. <laughs> A lot of outrageous things. It must have been good. It must have been good. Oh, it must have been world class. <laughs> Second and 11 from the 36 yard line. And that's caught over the middle. Great grab by Lamar Thomas, reaching up, holding it in with his fingertips, taking the ball into Jaguar territory. Now, this is what we're used to. We're looking at good pass protection. The Jaguars more to blitz that time. Dan Marino sets the blitz, moves a little bit in his pocket to his left, and finds Lamar Thomas down the football field. This is the type of offense that I think we've all been accustomed to watching the Miami Dolphins perform. Well, he puts a good move to the sideline on Deion Figures. And Lamar Thomas showing a little courage tonight. Knocked out of this game twice by injury. Still playing. First down at the 43. Marino's now throwing for over 200 yards, and Abdul Jabbar. It's taken down at the 41-yard line. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built for tough. Miller Lite, an official sponsor of the NFL. And Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. Super Bowl to be played in Miami this year. St. John's River. Bridges spanning it here. Rushing comparison tonight, as you can see. Jacksonville averaging 10 and a half on the ground. Miami, 1.6. And yet the game is even as Marino throws. And as a 28-yard line, that's hauled in by McDuffie. Of course, Jacksonville's average is plummeting. It was 77 yards it was. per carry. That's exactly right. <laughs> After the first play. Freddie Taylor on that first play. Since then, 11 carries for 12 yards for Taylor. Another nice catch by the wide receivers of the Miami Dolphins. O.J. McDuffie this time going up and snaring it with his hands. That's the way you catch a football. Catch it with your hands. Keep it away from your body. Nice and catch. And his front five, Boomer, giving him a good look at the field again. Absolutely. Those are the numbers that we're used to seeing Dan Marino put up. He's back. He may be. 
Back to call a timeout. Among other things, Fred Taylor has gone back to the locker room. We'll check him out. Remember, he went out holding his shoulder. So the Jaguar running back is back there. Marino takes a timeout to go over things with Johnson. 6-17 left in the third. Good one in Jacks. 14 all. Miami earlier today watching his team at one point down 14 to nothing. Now tied at 14 and on the move, first down at 10 to the 29 yard line. 617 left third quarter. Al Michaels with Dan Deaver, former assassin, and Leslie Visser from Jacksonville with Thomas in motion. Abdul Jabbar picks up about three. Tackled by Kelvin Pritchett. Here's a reminder tomorrow night, right here on ABC, good show. It's called Behind Closed Doors. It's Joan London who visited us a couple of weeks ago in Washington, and uh, she got behind all of our closed doors the truck, the booth, the rest of it. And it's a great special by Joan tomorrow night, right here on ABC. It was fun to uh, spend some time with Joan. Of course, Everybody remembers her from TMA. You bet. Great gal. Good show. Second down and eight from the 27-yard line as Marino throws. That's caught by McDuffie. He's tackled at the 23-yard line. Short game. Brant Boyer made the hit. O.J. McDuffie has really had a, a real solid game tonight. That time he catches the ball in a little bit of a seam and he wants to show his toughness and he wants to go back inside, but that's where all the big guys are coming from. But he went anyway. <laughs> he went anyway. He's a tough guy. I'd like to see him get a touchdown tonight. O.J. McDuffie, seven catches. Cooper would like to see him get a touchdown. He'd like to get a touchdown. It would be the first time, as we pointed out before, right. in over a year for McDuffie. On third and four. Caught and reaching out and getting the first down is the tight end, Ed Perry. Awesome pass protection. That's the key to it all. He gets a chance to step up. Dan Marino does. He gets to survey the field, and he hits one of his tight ends running a shallow cross, and he puts it perfectly right out in front of him to complete the ball. Unobstructed view. And that's exactly where you have to throw the ball to keep it away from the defender, Davis. He had a 360-degree unobstructed view. Absolutely. That's and, that's, and that's a key to any passing attack, obviously, is to keep your quarterback's view unobstructed. First down at the 17-yard line. Abdul-Jabbar. Boomer, Boomer, i got to ask you about this play that, that Miami runs where Dan sticks the ball out and runs about three yards to meet the ball carrier. Is that not showing everybody on the defense where the ball is, where the play is going? Well, it is. He's actually, it's actually rather ugly the way he hands the ball up. He's not pretty when he does it, but he also runs a play action pass kind of off of the same way. You see, it's not pretty. And he doesn't really do any faking after he hands the ball off. No, it's, it's, it just seems to me to set the play up for the defense way in advance. Second and eight. Marino wide open. Drayton touchdown. They've been running this play all night long. They've been hitting Drayton in the flat and, and hitting McDuffie as on a slant. And this time what they did is they ran him out into the flat to make it look like he was going to throw it to him. The safety jumped on him quickly, and Drayton just turned it up to the sideline. And Chris Hudson, that safety boomer, fell down. When 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 Drayton makes his turn upfield, there you see in the background, Chris Hudson is lying on the ground, completely out of the play. Terrific offensive call by Kippy Brown, noticing earlier in the game just how aggressive those safeties were on the tight ends in the flats. Things are a little quieter here at Altel than they were at the beginning when it was 14-0. No doubt about this one. Remember, Drayton had that touchdown grab that wasn't truly a touchdown, at least in the replay days earlier. No doubt about this one. A lot of teeth gnashing in Miami. People talking all week about get the tight ends more into the passing game. Well, they've responded. Drayton's made five grabs tonight. Perry has three. That's eight catches. Not only that, Ed Perry was the Miami Dolphin that was interfered with 
down at the two-yard line that gave Miami great field position on their last possession. So even though that wasn't a reception for Perry, still a big play by going to the tight end on a passing play. When you're a safety and you see play after play after play, that type of play being run your way, you have to be really careful about not getting sucked in like Chris Hudson did on that particular play. A thing to keep in mind here as we get ready to watch Jacksonville go on offense, the last time they left the field, it was with Mark Brunel looking like he was shaken up. And Taylor is still shaken up. Mare check fielded by Reggie Barlow at the goal line. Nice return after the 34-yard line. Tackle there by Derek Rogers with 3.18 left in the third. In the first half, Jacksonville almost 100 yards more than Miami, but the third quarter, a whole other story. <laughs> hey, the one thing that I don't understand is why Jacksonville has gotten away from throwing the ball deep down the sidelines, especially if they're going to play one-on-one. -on -one and the egg. you still have Keenan McCardell out there that you can go for it and take some chances down the field because Miami is still hasn't changed their defensive philosophy. They're aggressive. They're one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Fred Taylor, bruised shoulder. His return is uncertain. That is caught by the tight end, Pete Mitchell, seeking the first down, comes close. Tackled by Jackson. So Jacksonville minus Taylor and minus Jimmy Smith since early in the first half. Needless to say, two very large parts of their offense Fabian Banks, the guy that has to come in and, and handle a lot of the running uh, if Fred Taylor is not going to return to this game, had only nine carries coming into tonight's play, so pretty much untested. Second and one. Banks. Fabian picks up a first down out of bounds at the 50 yard line, fourth round pick out of Iowa. You know, well, we're, you, at, we're at sea level, but Dan is 37 years old. You can see he's taking oxygen while he looks at the pictures, and the pictures that he sees right there are stills from the videos, and it shows him the defense as the play evolves. So he'll have a number of different videos there that he can see, and he can analyze what the Jacksonville defense is trying to do to him. Dan's been at sea level for the last 16 years. Yes. Do you think he'd be acclimated? Yes. <laughs> we're now throwing Accepted the pass hung flag is thrown. Buckley. No, he dropped say, it. Yep, it, he doesn't have it to begin with, and there's a marker down. And it's a hole against the Jaguars. Oh, Buckley had this ball all the way. How did he not end up with it? This was served right to Terrell Buckley. Holding, 79, offense, still first down. Tavian Banks did a great job of getting that ball away from Terrell Buckley. There is no 79, by the way. No, I don't think there is. It's a mad scramble to go to the old... Uh, what a terrific play by Tavian Banks, though. I mean, yeah. knocking the ball and stripping it out of Buckley's hands. 73 is the man he met, Brian DeMarco, the guard. All right, Boomer, that was, that saved a sure interception. And the other thing that I sense right now is that Mark Brunell is not seeing down the field quite clearly enough. That was a dangerous throw, obviously. He was glassy out on that last series, and he might be again here as Trace Armstrong sacks him. And here comes another late flag. Jason Taylor gets knocked flat. I think Baselli hits him. These two have been going at it the whole game. Now, these two have been locking up here on pass plays the entire game. And Baselli, well after the play is over, knocks Taylor down. Now, to Baselli's credit, what we got to try to figure out is, does he know his quarterback has been sacked, or does he think the play is still alive? We'll watch and see. Up at the upper right, there's Baselli. There's Taylor. All right, there's the sack. They both kind of push at each other. I don't see. I don't. I, I don't know that Baselli knows that the play is over. You know, those are two big guys there. You know, I. They're supposed to be knocking each other around.
Well, this has been going on since uh, about a quarter of nine. Well, Jason Taylor looks at Tony Baselli as the best offensive lineman in football and a guy that he wants to he wants to prove himself against. It's a benchmark. He's been complaining to Johnny Greer the whole game. And, and I think they're going to pick up that. I don't. They're starting to look like they might pick up that flag. Well, you know what? I, I don't think that that's, I don't think that's a, you know, I think they should pick it up. Personal foul, Personal foul. unnecessary ruckus, number 71, number offense, offense is declined. Second down. Declined? I guess what? they wanted to, as opposed to, they're going to take the sack, I guess. And yeah, I guess they'll take the sack, which is about, what, close to a 10-yard loss mm -hmm. rather than a 15-yard loss. But, but I would think that it would pick have been up tacked down. on. I thought that it would be tacked on to it because it was after the play yeah. was over, wasn't it? But it wasn't. Second down. But it's not. Hmm. It, it's, it was second, and, and it was first and 20. It is now second and 27. And this is Banks taking an inside handoff. To the outside, he goes up to the 42-yard line, tackled there by Jerry Wilson. How could it be a penalty if the play were still going on, though? I, I don't think it should have been a penalty to begin with. But I don't but think it was Tony a penalty, penalty, though. Oh, I know they called it a penalty. But what I'm saying to you is that how, how could that be a penalty if he had called it while the play was still going on? It wouldn't have been a penalty. Am I right? The only reason it was a penalty is because the play was over. Well, you can call a personal foul in the middle of a play. But that no, wasn't but a Boomer's, personal foul, though. It's just, it's, it's good blocking if it happens right. during the course of the play. No, but, Boomer's uh, point is very valid. Uh, well, anyway, right now the Jaguars are kind of coming a All little bit apart here. Number 65, 65 offense. offense. The second series in a row, or the second drive in a row for Miami where they've done that. And, and, you know, and it's all because of the pressure that the defense of the Miami Dolphins is putting on the offensive line. And, and, you know, they're getting back to Mark Brunel. They need to get a little bit back into, I think, some play-action passes, move Mark Brunel around a little bit. He's, he's not seeing down the field as well as he should be in the pocket right now. What the Dolphins have brought with them tonight is a lot of spunk, a lot of fight, and a lot of aggressiveness. Third and 23. A little over a minute to go in the third. Miami up by seven. Well, we're in a real flag fest now. We are. You have to wonder if the two weeks off, the bye week, has had anything to do with this. Prior to the snap, 72, offense. Still third down. First half was pretty clean. There is played. There is one of those. That's Leon Searcy. So we'll all take our shots right now and get it out maybe in the third quarter and come back somehow in the fourth quarter and make some plays, but... Well, Boomer, I'll tell you one thing. This is fun watching Baselli and Jason Taylor go at it. These are two young guys, both of them trying to make make a name. For, well, Baselli doesn't need to make a name for himself. Jason Taylor doesn't either, for that matter. But these guys, these guys have locked up big time. Third and 28, four of the five interior linemen have had penalties called on them in this series. And Brunel throws and finds the open man Barlow at the 47-yard line, but well short of the first down. And they'll kick. Jacksonville had one penalty in the first half, six of them in the third quarter. Tony Baselli this time. Taylor's going to take the inside, try that rip move. And he has effectively collapsed all the way to the inside <laughs> by Tony Baselli. And that's what you call athletic by a left offensive tackle. Barker's kick, another flag. It's juggled by Buckley. Holds it in, brings it back to the six-yard line. It's tackled there. And this flag is way back upfield, up towards the line of scrimmage. It's fourth and 13 at the line of scrimmage. It's in the area of an illegal man downfield, I think. Entirely too many flags on the field for both of these coaches. Uh, both of them are disciplinarians. Both of them talk about playing discipline-oriented, tough-nosed football, and flags are not. Illegal shift. Offense. Two men moving prior to the snap. Still fourth down. Seven penalties now on Jacksonville in the period. And, and, and flags are not in their repertoire. I mean, they just, 
it drives all coaches crazy but really when you look at these two guys the, the things that they're trying to teach their football teams this is going to be a sore point in the film study tomorrow well of course with that bad field position because of the bobble the Dolphins will force them to kick again see if they can come up with a big play from Buckley this time Walker and Buckley takes it at the three-yard line, an injudicious move. Guess what? Well, the quarter is over, at least on the clock. Oh, and there's another but flag. Three of them. But now, the first two were on the return. This one comes in late after the play again. Like there was a clip. Illegal blocking the back. Number 50 of the receiving team. Still first down. Dwight Hollier. Well, then one of the guys couldn't get his flag out of his pocket for a long time. <laughs> that is, mercifully, the end of the third quarter. 21-14 Dolphins. Monday Night Football back after these messages from our local station. Back in Jacksonville, Al Michaels with Dan Deardorff, Boomer Esiason, and Leslie Visser. The Miami Dolphins at one point down 14-0. Begin the final quarter. Up by seven, 21-14 Dolphins. Dan Marino, first down at the Miami seven-yard line. Abdul Jabbar picks up a couple and another flag. <laughs> flag. <laughs> ay ay ay. Holding Miami. Offense, still first down. Center, Tim Ruddy. Coaches hate holding calls on running plays. They, they, really, they really get upset. On the right side, there's number 61, Tim Ruddy. That's a hold. He pretty much uh, <laughs> hog ties Kelvin Pritchett and drags him down. And yes, <laughs> that is a hold. And a half. First and 14 from the four-yard line. Marino throws incomplete up at the 15 in and out of the hands of O.J. McDuffie. You asked about that uh, type of handoff right there. You saw it again. It was a play-action fake off it. It's a nice throw to O.J. McDuffie. I was surprised he didn't catch it. Down here, the defense tends to be much more aggressive. And the offense has to be careful where they throw the football and through the outside is, is the safe place. Well, I can tell you one thing for sure, Boomer. As an offensive lineman, nothing made your heart get up in your throat faster than having to pass protect in your own end zone. Absolutely. Where the if you get caught, it's a safety. Right, and the quarterback knows he's got to get rid of it. He's got to get rid of it quickly. Second down and 14. And goes the bar. No game. The Jacksonville defense has got to rise up. He's got to get the momentum back on to their side. He's got to get the fans back into it right now. And give their offense good field position to work with. Third and 13 out of your own end zone. You got to play there, Dan? Well, if I had to have a guy to run it, I might pick number 13 to do it. Well, he wouldn't be running it, would he? Well... Executed. How about executed? Right. You're right. Last time Dan Marino ran for anything, we had a different president. Marino throws too long. Intended for Gadsden. This is an opportunity now for the special teams of the Jaguars to go after the punter. Especially since Loomsmeyer is not punting. Wilmsmeyer hurt before, so Mare does the punting. Jacksonville should get the ball in pretty good shape. And they're setting up for a return right now as opposed to a block. Reggie Barlow stands at the 50. Mare in the back of the end zone. His last punt was 36 yards. This one a short kick, fielded up at the 40 and fair caught there. And that one was 36 yards. So the Jaguars have it on the plus side of the 50 at the 40 of Miami 
21-14 Dolphins. ESPN Thursday Night Football, Green Bay against Detroit. Pack coming back after their loss to the Vikings, and then we'll be in New England next Monday night for the Jets against the New England Patriots. Drew Bledsoe and Robert Edwards and the Patriots coming off that tremendous win over Kansas City yesterday. Here, Jacksonville down by seven. Tavian Banks is the running back, and Brunel, under pressure, escapes the sack. And throws deep downfield into the end zone and broken up in the end zone. Oh, and Jason oh. Taylor can't believe that he did everything perfectly. And if ever there was an example of Mark Brunel's athleticism and being able to get... Taylor is all over this. He is not fooled by the misdirection the other way. He's waiting for Brunel, and he just can't get him. It's only the fifth time that they ran it at him. Really what I would have liked to see more kind of floats it out there instead of really driving the football. If he drives the football, he has a chance for a completion. And Buckley breaks it up at the end, intended for Barlow, second down and 10 at the 40-yard line. And that's a gain of six as it's pulled in by Keenan McCardell. It'll be third down and four. Pass complete to Keenan McCardell. Terrell Buckley back to the pass. Gain of seven. Take a look at the athleticism of Mark Brunel, but how about a defensive lineman? This is what they've become. They become like praying mantis back there with those long arms, and they come flying after you, and they can run faster than you can. Well, Jason Taylor, one of the fastest defensive linemen in the league, one of the most athletic, and Brunel still gets away from it. Third and three after McCardell makes his first catch of the night. His running mate Smith hasn't played since the first quarter. And that is caught by Reggie Barlow. And that's how you deliver the football. They gave him good protection, and Mark stepped into the throw and drilled Barlow right between the numbers. And that's a good throw, good solid throw, and Barlow does a good job of getting separation from Buckley. And here's Baselli and Jason Taylor. Watch this. This goes on for about 10 seconds. Baselli drives him all the way over. The ball's long gone. He gives him that little Robert, extra shot. But he comes back, and Taylor's going to get right back in his face and follow him all the way across the field. First down from the 23-yard line. The now by that time. Wide open is Keenan McCardell for the touchdown. think anybody's more satisfied than Tony Baselli at the end of that play. And you know something? He's complaining to the official. He thinks that Jason Taylor intentionally stepped on him after the play was over <laughs> on amazing. his way down to the end zone. This is a war. Yeah, these you guys know what? A nice job of play action faking. Ricardo getting behind the secondary, the aggressive secondary. And that time, Brunel lays it up nicely. Almost the time of game. McCardell goes over 47 minutes tonight without making a catch. Then he makes two in less than a minute. The second for a touchdown to not the game at 21. This is as they got back down to the goal line. Tony Baselli saying something to Jason Taylor, and he... I think that's a little nani nani na na there to Tony Baselli. <laughs> uh, two intense football players really going at it. Locking them. Despite giving away around 80 pounds. Caught at the 14 by John Avery. And run back to the 29-yard line. That's where Miami has it. Leslie Visser. Leslie, top of the evening to you. Uh, good, good evening to you, gentlemen. On that matchup you've been talking about, Jason Taylor told me before the game that he just wasn't ready physically for this game, but also verbally, and he said he was ready to trash talk Tony Baselli in complete sentences. Al? Oh, really? Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Subjects, was, verbs, the whole thing, right? As good as Jason Taylor can be and will be probably, the one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to anger a superstar. And that's what Tony Baselli is. And as a football player and as a quarterback, you want your biggest, strongest, meanest guys just like this on the sideline. That's the heart and soul of a football team. I, I wouldn't disagree with a single word. Were you like that when you played? Yeah, well, 
When I got to know nice guy now, though. I am. First down from the 29-yard line. That's caught by Troy Drayton, who picks up three up to the 32-yard line. When you're as good as Tony Baselli, guys, you are a marked man. To get a sack off of a guy like Baselli makes some guys season. So he's used to this. Jason Taylor isn't the first guy to come after him. Jason Taylor's one of the most talented guys to ever come after him. I just don't think you need to make matters worse by John on the field. You just leave a sleeping dog lie and let him be. Don't anger him and don't entice him. Well, we were never defensive ends. Abdul Jabbar. Up close to a first down up to the 39 yard line tackled by McManus. You know, it's the same thing on the other side, too. I mean, as an offensive lineman, you're not going to be screaming at a Bruce Smith, are you? I mean, you're not going to try to antagonize him into, you know, taking out on your quarterback. I know that from personal no. experience. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get anybody upset. It's, 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 guys are tied up enough out here. Johnny Greer calling for the measurement. A good, effective, hard run that time by Jabbar. Kind of see the swagger in Dan Marino uh, is back a little bit tonight. He's got that that shoulder move and that, that those big long strides, and he's he knows he's feeling it tonight. They've got it. First down. At the 39, 10:42 left. left. Again, the Jaguars trying to remain undefeated. The Miami Dolphins with a win would stay in a first place tie with the New England Patriots at four and one. Jags will be in first regardless of the outcome here because Pittsburgh is three and two. The other three teams in the AFC Central are two and three. First and 10 from the 39 yard line. Marino throws and that is dropped. Abdul Jabbar, nobody around him. Second down. Oh, those are killers when your players drop the football like that, especially when you have a play that is designed. It's wide open. The ball is delivered right on the money. Oh. Sixteen yards rushing against the Jets fewest in any game in his career and tonight 16 more yards on 16 carries keep in mind this is a guy that had 1100 yards plus back in 96 almost 900 last year second down and 10 Marino throws and oh. Lamar Thomas reaches Man. for it makes the catch 45 first down and Danny's offensive line and backs they are putting on a clinic on how to pass protect Ooh. What a nice catch by Lamar Thomas, who's had a rough game in terms of uh, his physical well-being tonight, but seems to keep getting up and making plays. And Danny was telling me this week that Lamar is a type of player that he believes can be, become a big play player for him. So he has confidence in him, and he's made some wonderful catches tonight. First down, Abdul Jabbar. Two yard gain. Tackled by Pritchett. We're well, dealing with the Jaguar defense, which is sixth against the rush in the NFL, and, and actually looked very good holding up against the, the rush. But tonight, going against the 29th pass offense, I think that they've left a little bit to be desired out on the field. Yeah, they're not, well, first of all, they're not getting any pressure on Dan Marino. You know, they've had their moments, but collectively, as a whole, Dan Marino's having a pretty good look at the football field. And he's continually throwing the ball to the left side against Deion Figures, who's in replacing Dave Thomas. Uh, second and eight. Great protection up front. Fires to the outside, but good coverage on Drayton by Deion Figures. Third ten. <laughs> I mean, Marino has been enjoying this kind of protection for the entire second half. This is called just snuffing it. Look, both inside linebackers run a crisscross. Look at that. They don't, there is no penetration whatsoever. And that's a rarity that Dan Marino gets that kind of protection and doesn't find somebody somewhere open. 
Well, the addition of Kevin Donnelly, the unrestricted free agent from the Oilers, certainly has had something to do with that. Third and eight, the owner of the Jaguars, Wayne Weaver, looks on. Third and eight, Marino out of the shotgun. Here they come, up through the middle. Marino draped around his ankle that time was Travis Davis. He got it away incomplete. Tended for Gadsden in the lead fourth down. They'll have to punt. Well, it took a secondary blitz to get to him, but at this point in time in the game, you have to get back there any way you can. Well, they came up and covered every one of the offensive linemen and then come with the safety. There is nobody to block him, and that is just a great job of Dan Marino. The guy's got no legs left, no speed, but he knew enough to move a foot and stay alive. He knows how to move in the pocket, one of the best. Oligno Mane, the backup punter, because Wilms Meyer is hurt. A little too deep, floats into the end zone. Jags will get it at the 20-yard line. 8-28 left in a good one at Old Tell Stadium where the Dolphins and the Jaguars are locked up at 21. Hey, Budweiser. 74,051, a new stadium record. And they're watching this comparison among the quarterbacks. Marino his best night of the year by far, and Brunel, an off night from the 20-yard line, first down Jacksonville. Thank That's one of the reasons Brunel is not having as big a night as normal. Jimmy Smith in street clothes, his primary receiver, done early. McCardell did not make a catch for 47 minutes, so he did get the touchdown that tied the game. And Brett Taylor is done for the night as well now. And Fred Taylor at 226, close to 230 pounds, delivers the power that Tavian Banks does not. Banks at 194, likes to bounce it to the outside. He'll take that choice rather than slam the middle. Second and 11 from the 19-yard line. Inside handoff to Banks. Cuts it back. To the 23, third down and seven upcoming. Darrell Gardner triple. One of the things that really hurt the Jaguars last year at the end of the year and in the playoffs is, is the amount of injuries that they had to their defensive line. And already this year, you just think about the players that they've lost in Lagerman, now Smith tonight, Taylor tonight, Stewart. I mean, there's a long list now. Every, every team has to deal with it. It just seems like the Jaguars have the most important players that are getting hurt. Yeah, you're coming this way. And Don Davey, a guy who'd be rotating in and out of the lineup, and Jabbar Threech as well. Third down and six. Brunel for Barlow, incomplete. Good coverage that time, one-on-one, -on -one, as Reggie was blanketed by <laughs> Sam Madison. And you can see Tom Coughlin down there arguing this point. He thought Madison pushed off and pushed Barlow into the sideline. <laughs> These coaches don't miss anything, do they? Well, that wasn't close. Let's go back to our soap opera. Jason Taylor, Tony Baselli. Tony Baselli spins him all the way around, and that's almost blocked. Barker got it away. Fielded by Buckley. He's tackled at the 34-yard line. And slowly but surely, this is Jimmy Johnson football. He's winning the battle of field position. The Dolphins going to start in pretty good shape. Please, Dad, just one more time. One more time. If I may... Tonight, 26 out of 40 for 266. Hit Drayton with that pass for a touchdown. And Danny tonight having a good night. Has brought his team from behind. They have time now at 21. First down from the 35-yard line. That blew the bar. Gain of nine off a Stanley Pritchett block, second and short. If you're really concerned about getting to Dan Marino, as the Jaguar defense seems to be, they blitz that time, and if your linebackers don't hit their holes and they don't hit their lanes, your running backs can find holes in there, and that's exactly what uh, Jabbar did at this particular point. And, Boomer, you mentioned Kevin Donnelly early. He's the guy that sprang the key block on that one to get Jabbar downfield. This Miami Dolphin offensive line has played a fine game tonight. Second and a short one. First down, Jabbar. Okay. 
Abdul Jabbar to the 49 yard line. You know, you talked about it being a Jimmy Johnson game. Jimmy Johnson wants to eat the clock up, he wants to run the football, and he wants to play field position. Monday Night Football brought to you by Miller Light, an official sponsor of the NFL. Jeep, makers of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Cherokee, and Wrangler. Prudential, bringing strength and stability to America's families through insurance, health care, real estate, and financial services. And Visa, the preferred card of the NFL, is everywhere you want to be. From the 49-yard line, Abdul Jabbar in the Jacksonville territory. Gain of seven of the 44, tripped up by McManus. Dan Marino, how many times has he been here before? That's the official figure. 43 game-winning drives in the fourth quarter or overtime. And so far on this drive, it's been the running game. And we're going to move inside the five-minute mark of the fourth quarter here. And the Dolphins right now are doing what Jimmy loves. They are grinding it on the clock and on the ground. On second and three. They grind it a little more on the ground. Very close to a first down for Abdul Jabbar to the 41. Tackled by Pop. You know, coming into the game, we were wondering, you know, why Dan Marino hasn't been used more. But we saw tonight, and we have seen the night, that he is as effective as a quarterback as there is in the NFL. He doesn't run the ball. He knows how to manipulate himself in the pocket. But he's also smart. He knows how to handle defenses and situations. And right now, he's running the play clock down, and he's shortening this game, and he's taking his time. That was a first down. From the 41-yard line. And that's caught by Pritchard. He gets rolled down to the 40-yard line. Minimal game. Deion Figures made a hit. A reminder that... He is Mr. Right to all of those who have ever been wrong. Michael Madsen stars in Vengeance Unlimited, ABC, Thursday. It's kind of like you up here, Dan. I think there's unlimited <laughs> vengeance here going on with Jason Taylor and, T and Tony Vaselli. Luckily, the combatants are getting a rest here while the other guys go at it, but a little vengeance there. Second and eight from the 39-yard line. And this is Avery, John Avery, who hasn't played much in the second half. Saw a lot of action in the first half of the 36-yard line. Somebody's without a helmet down there. O.J. McDuffie, did he lose his? <laughs> this is going to be a huge play for the, for actually for both teams, but... More importantly for the Jacksonville defense, they have to rise up and they have to stop the Miami Dolphins here. We'll be under three minutes if the Dolphins get a first down. Well, they're playing pass. Three receiver set. In addition, the Dolphins are right at the outer edge of field goal range. Third down and three, and it's incomplete. Oh, and they got some pressure on Dan. They forced Dan to throw that football, falling backwards and a little before he wanted to. Now they came with that blitz that they did the last series where they brought Travis Davis, number 45, up the middle. If Danny could have just delivered the ball a little bit quicker and more accurate, he would have had a first down, but he was rushed. Well, Dick Duran, the defensive coordinator, took a chance, and he came with it, and he won. Well, Mate's going to line up for a field goal. 50 what, 54? How about a pooch kick 54. Here? Vilmsmeyer, they could snap it right to him and he could pooch it. Right. Vilmsmeyer is the normal punter, but he's going to put it down and Mare's going to kick it, and the kick is no good. Had the distance, but just wide. Ooh, and Jimmy grinds his teeth. He knows the field position now that Jacksonville's going to get. And it comes back whence it was spotted. So it's the 44-yard oh, line oh, man. at which the Jaguars get the football. The field position game that Jimmy Johnson and the Dolphins had been winning with that missed field goal, they are now losing. <laughs> All the body English in the world. Oh, he almost hurt himself. <laughs> Watch out, Jim. He's actually not thinking that was his best shot to win, and he went for it. Now he, he has guts, I'll tell you that much. And he has confidence in his defense. He does. First down from the 44-yard line. Now the pressure on the Miami defense says 
Brunel goes deep for McCoy now. He beats Buckley. Touchdown. And Jason Taylor now gets taunted by Tony Baselli. The game is all about field position, and you take your shots when you have an opportunity. That missed field goal gave the Jacksonville offense the opportunity to go for the big one right out the gate. And this is the pass that they completed earlier, a little down and out corner pattern. That is a great throw by Mark Brunel and a great route by Keenan McCardell. Buckley, though, Boomer had coverage on McCardell and then appeared to become a little disoriented. Sean. Hollis bangs it through. McCardell, as we said before, he went 47 minutes tonight without a single catch. Now he's made three, two of them huge ones in the fourth quarter. 56-yard touchdown pass. We know when you put your cornerbacks one-on-one and you put them in a situation like this, even though they might be some of the best athletes on your team, you have to remember that they are covering the opposing team's best athletes. It's when Buckley looks back for the football that he loses distance. Right here, he's going to look back. Right there. When he looked back, the ball was too far out. McCardell made the adjustment, and Buckley was lost at that point. And a cornerback's best friend, cornerback's best friend is the protection. And Mark Fidel had nobody around him, and I bet you Tony Baselli had something to do with it. Hey, and it was Baselli and Taylor, and when this play was over, Just let sleeping Watch dogs it. fly, my friend. That's right. Don't the ball's gone. And Tony Baselli, at the end of this thing, walked up to Jason Taylor and said, let's go down and line up for an extra point. There right he here. <laughs> let's go. Extra points this way. That man is yeah. 6'7", 330 pounds, yeah. running backwards, like so light on his feet. Yeah, yeah. But he's saying, let's go line up where my team is taking the lead, my man. It's a tough spot to be in. Terrell Buckley and Sam Madison find themselves week in and week out, one-on-one -on -one against some of the best athletes in football. You're going to win some and you're going to lose some. Well, you know what? Now we get to watch Dan Marino do it. With a ton of time as Hollis kicks off. John Avery takes it in at the five-yard line. And whew, Tom Coughlin saying Jacksonville's Achilles heel to this point this season has been kickoff coverage. He brings this one back to the 34. And one of the things that I see on their kickoff coverage is how much space is on the field. Yeah. Guys must be running out of their lanes. You have to be disciplined on the kickoff cover team to stay in your lane and not give that return man an opportunity to run from sideline to sideline like this got an injured uh, Jacksonville player who's having to be uh, helped off the field Chris Howard running back from Michigan that was what I believe in Denver's training camp right he was. And released by Denver on their practice squad and now he's on the active roster here at Jacksonville and Tom Coughlin says give us some help well, the Dolph Dolphins have two minutes and 24 seconds and two timeouts left an eternity for a player like Dan Marino to move down the field. The question is, is, will Jacksonville blitz or will they sit back in a prevent? The only rush for Marino out of the gun throws wide open over the middle. The catch is made. Gadsden inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. Tackled by Beasley. Well, and Brock stills the crowd. And for a guy that a lot of people haven't heard of, Aranda Gadsden has really played himself a nice football game here this evening. He sure has, but you cannot play zone defense against Dan Marino. Um, he will pick you apart. Two-minute warning.
week's video highlights on NFL. Stay tuned to ABC for your local programming or to ESPN. Tune over there for the post-game show from Jacksonville. Two minutes to go. Two timeouts for Miami. They trail by seven. First and ten at the 38-yard line. Marino from the shotgun. And that is thrown into a bunch of teal shirts and incomplete intended uh -oh. for Ed Perry. You got to be really careful in this situation if you are uh, the Jaguar defense. Jick Duran is kind of in a catch-22 situation. You don't really want to sit back in zones if your defensive line is not getting pressure. But then again, if you blitz, you have to be really careful about singling up a guy like O.J. McDuffie, who has had a good game tonight. You know, and that's the situation that you find yourself in when you're a defensive coordinator. I bet he hopes that Marino makes another throw like that last one. Which is dangerous because yes. it was in his zone. Here comes the blitz. Here it comes. Straight for the football. Bracken. Jaguars have it. Tony Bracken. He stripped it and recovered it. His first game of the year. He's hurt in the second preseason game. And that's how you make an impact when you come back. Dan never saw it. Ooh. You see they blitz up at the top of the screen. Richmond Webb tries to push Brackens around, and he can't do it, and Brackens makes a great play. Well, Brackens a lot like his counterpart on the Miami Dolphins, Jason Taylor. Great speed, ability to get around the corner, stay alive, and that is, that's just an all-pro play by Tony Bracken. Now Miami has two timeouts left, so Jacksonville would need a first down to run the clock out. And Banks gets wrestled down by Thomas, and Miami will take a timeout here at a minute 45 remaining. You know, it's such a good thing about that play was that he probably couldn't have sacked him because no. he was too far past him, but he made, and he has the awareness to go after the football to force the fumble. How many times, Dan, have right. you seen an unabated guy get to the quarterback and think about just getting the sack and not forcing the fumble. Well, that's that's why they think Tony Bracken's is special. Because that is, you know, Boomer, you hear coaches and Al all the time talking about, I want playmakers. I want somebody who makes a difference. Well, that's the play of a playmaker. Instead of just going by and waving at the quarterback and saying, well, I got the hurry or I got close. No, that's more than getting close. That's getting it done. And that's a playmaker. 15 sacks, 15 forced fumbles in that many games. That's the type of guy that you're looking for. Second and 11. Miami will take a timeout on the next play. It'll be their last. Oh, here we go. So that only took three seconds, and Jason Taylor makes the tackle. Now they'll have to stop him here, and at least they'll have the opportunity, if they do, to get the ball back without a timeout. Fabian Banks has got to stop making his initial move when he wants to change direction to the outside. Hey, guess who's here? It's the Taylor and Baselli show. And Jason Taylor did a great job of getting in between Baselli and Mitchell that time, splitting what is essentially a double team. But watch Banks. There it is. Every time, he just heads to the sideline. Tom Coughlin mentioned it last night. We know he wants to head to the outside, but that, that's a habit as a running back. You've got to break. Toto, well, we're not in Iowa anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> Toto, but we're not know, in Iowa anymore. The, the thing that I would say there is that if you know that that's what he wants to do, pitch the ball to him outside, let him run outside, Make sure that he's a rookie. Make sure that he knows not to go out of bounds, however. Well, Put a player yeah. in the situation where he can excel the best. The player they'd like to have in there is on the sidelines with a bad shoulder, Fred Taylor. Third down and 15. Hey, there he is. The ground. This is Banks going forward, but of course, when you need 15, this will take the clock under a minute. Calvin Jackson makes the tackle, and then Miami will get the ball back with... 45, 50, 55 seconds remaining. Which is still more than enough time for Dan Marino to move the ball down the field. Who knows, with the way Terrell Buckley has been involved in so many things tonight, I wouldn't put it past you that he runs this one back.
play clock is down to seven and ticking down and Jaguars will be content to even take the de delay of game penalty or a timeout their choice they've chosen to take the timeout I mean, you talk about some teams making statements yesterday how about New England that was and we'll be in New England next week it's going to be an interesting uh, Monday night I would say well I I don't know how many let me ask you how many years are going to have to go by before a Bill Parcells New England matchup won't be fun oh it's going to be a it's, long time it's a while it's going to be a long time and and you're right Pete Carroll had to just be beside himself with joy to watch his club annihilate Kansas City yeah. and Parcells beside himself with agony yesterday well that's that's the thing uh, about the NFL is, is that it's the ebbs and flows of a game and, and a season where you know you have to pick yourself up after a loss like that and the thrill of victory the agony oh of it is really well where we've heard that before <laughs> and then irony of ironies it happens on the day when Foley doesn't have a touch of birdies on the bench and Neil O'Donnell is one of the big stars of the day elsewhere the ex-jet 15 yard line Terrell Buckley runs out of bounds at the 20 48 seconds flagged out at the 50. Oh, uh -oh. is this before the kick or after that is always the question to be asked well this the flags at the 50 yard line So 90 yards and 49 seconds. I've seen it happen. Holding number 29 of the receiving team during the kick. We will penalize from the spot of the catch. First down. Sam Madison. Well, well, the spot of the catch. So it'll be how about, longer than 90 uh, 90 yards. How about Cincinnati and Pittsburgh yesterday? Yes. Versus Dan football, Marino man. right now could use Carl Pickens. Yeah, he sure can. Hey, how about Carl Pickens? Well, you know, he's a free agent, and I think he's making a statement. And Atlanta going into New York last night, a big win for Dan Reeves. And San Francisco getting back on track. They stopped the season right now. Dan Reeves would have to be coach of the year. First and ten at the eight-yard line. Juggle caught, and Parmalee can't get out of bounds. Mike Logan drops him. Even better off dropping that ball. Clock ticking down, 34-33. And really what the, what the Jaguars are doing now is they have two safeties over the top of the outside receivers playing real deep. It's going to be very difficult to get any completions. Over the middle we go, and that's incomplete. Only two ticks remaining. Danny's hoping for a uh, a pass interference right there. At this point, what the Jacksonville Jaguars want to do is put three guys deep and put five guys under and not allow anybody to get over the top of the, of the deeper guys, of the deeper safeties. The field goal that was missed by Marty. It was long enough, wasn't it? Yes, yes it was. appeared to be. Yeah. You know, Jimmy's going to think a long time about sure. should I or shouldn't I have gone for that. And the very next play was a 56-yard touchdown pass. Third down and six. That's caught. This is Parmalee. And Bernie just runs straight up the field. All they're trying to do is give him a chance to get in an area where he could probably throw a Hail Mary. They're going to spike in the mid throw the Hail Mary. Okay, okay. The old Hail Mary. Boy, I hated these. <laughs> well, Dan, uh, you know, Dan only had two interceptions coming into this game. One of them was a Hail Mary. Yep. And I agree with you, Boomer. That's, that's hardly fair that that ball thrown up there at the end of a first half or at the end of a game, if it's picked off, should count against the quarterback's mm -hmm. career record. That, one thing I, I got to tell you, I've been impressed with the receiving core of the Miami Dolphins. They came to play tonight. Time out. In a passing game that we didn't know existed, showed up, and that bodes well for the Dolphins uh, for Number the future three. of this year. Jacksonville has 12 guys on the field, <laughs> and that's a wise timeout. 
You think about what this is the first time that if Jacksonville can hang on the win here, which they probably will, will be the first time in their franchise where they've been where they've been two games in the lead for the AFC Central Crown. Going to five and zero, oh, checking out the pulse of Wayne Weaver, <laughs> whose team in five more seconds will join Denver and Minnesota as the only uh, unbeaten remaining teams in the National Football League. Interestingly, in two weeks, Jacksonville plays at Denver. And before the season is done, Jacksonville plays at Minnesota. <laughs> Marino along the way tonight, 322 yards. It's the 57th time in his career. He's thrown for 300 or more yards. Another Marino record. Second down and ten. Barring a defensive penalty, this will end the game. Knockdown. And the Jaguars go to 5-0. and oh. Grant Boyer knocks it down. Tom Coughlin's team takes off on a three-game road trip with a two-game lead in the AFC Central. And the Dolphins, who guttily came from behind, once down 14 to nothing, then out in front, 21 to 14, head back to Miami. And on to St. Louis next weekend. I think the immediate future for both of these teams is going to be good. Both of them showed tonight that they can play. And for Miami to come in here and play this well, Dan, I think I, I, they, they, they picked up a lot from where they were last week. When they were down 14 nothing, we're all sitting here going, oh, wow, this is going to be a rout. A, a proud performance by the Dolphins. The Jacksonville Jaguars beat the Miami Dolphins 28 to 21. We'll wrap it up after this. Jacksonville wins it 28 to 21. Let's go to Leslie. Al, they are one of three undefeated teams in the National Football League, the only undefeated team in the state of Florida. Talk about the emotion of this game, Tony. Well, we knew it was a big game. We knew it was at stake uh, with uh, Pittsburgh losing yesterday and you know, our division kind of being a wash. We feel like we could get up two games because uh, there's a lot of good play teams in that division. If we can get early lead, it'll help us out a lot. Jason Taylor was very much looking forward to playing against you. What was that matchup like? Yeah, I, don't, I don't have much to say about that, you know. Uh, nothing nice to say, don't say it. <laughs> Is that what your mother taught you? <laughs> what about the Tony on the other side of the line, your defensive Tony Brackens, big game for him? Tony Brackens has uh, really stepped up when it counted. Uh, he was a little rusty early just because he knew he hadn't played, but guys uh, could be one of the best in the league if he keeps on going the way he is. Well, awfully impressive. You are a force to be reckoned with. Back to you, Al. He could be a diplomat. I like that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Looking for an ambassadorship is one Tony Vizzelli. Because we saw in, uh, in full glory the battle tonight between Vaselli and Taylor. So the Jaguars win it by a score of 28 to 21. You can stay tuned to ABC for local news or other local programming or go over to ESPN for the post-game show following this one. We go to New England next week where it'll be the New York Jets against the New England Patriots. For now, Al Michaels along with Dan Deardorff, Boomer Esiason, and Leslie Visser saying good night.